Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the Ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. I thought I would start off the program this morning by giving you some scientific facts that really mean... Nothing. Here's number one. If you yelled for eight years, seven months, and six days, you would have produced enough sound energy to heat one cup of coffee. And here's the one that's the most amazing. If you pass gas consistently for six years and nine months, enough gas is produced to create the energy of an atomic bomb. There you go. Here comes Kate Smith. God bless America. Followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning, good morning. And a good, good morning to you and yours on a Tuesday, April 30th, last day of April, and tomorrow, May Day, May Day. And uh, Zeb at the Ranch, I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. Oh, my goodness, with the big spring tire sale. Don't forget, get in there today, save money, and drive safely. All seven locations. And don't forget, too, some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. At 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you get back to being you. Right now, let's go to the uh, microphone and the telephone and have our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning, sir. My friend. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There's the man. Thank you, Doug. God bless you, man. I appreciate it. And right now it's time for the weather. And the weather brought to you by our friends at K&R Rental. Hello, Roger and the crew. Roger this, Roger that. All day long over at K&R Rental. 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Right there on the Burley Paul Highway. K&R Rental offers the best of tools and equipment for rental. That's right. And whatever your project is, I'm telling you. The way the forecast was the other day, we're going to hear an update on that in just a minute, but it sounds like you can get a lot done this week and this weekend. So check with K&R Rental for the tools you need. If you have questions, give them a call at 678-3122, K&R Rental. Right now, here's the weather. Definitely spring-like conditions for today, and we are expecting mostly cloudy skies, a little bit of a breeze, high of 49 tonight. We do have a slight chance of rain, possible snow showers up in the higher elevations with a low of 30. For tomorrow, again, partly cloudy skies, expecting a high of 56 with an overnight low of 34. Warming up for Thursday, partly sunny skies, high of 63. Then as we make our way towards the weekend, going to be warming up into the mid-70s by Sunday, possible 77 under mostly sunny skies. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zephyr Rand. I love it, I love it, I love it, man. Bring it on. Bring the heat on. Thank you, Gina. And the weather brought to you by K&R Rental at 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Yep, they're early in the morning. They turn the door open for you to walk on. In. Turn the door open for you to walk on in. Unlock the door. There you go. 7 o'clock in the morning, they start KR Rental on the Burley Paul Highway. Number to call 678 3122. 
By the way, don't forget, Thursday is sale day at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley. Oh, the sale that works for you. Merv May, Cade Roggy, and Lance Udy all teamed up with the rest of the crew to serve you. Absolutely sale time, starting time, 1030 on Thursdays at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley. Number to call for cattle consignments and sale information, 678-9411. Caller, I'll be right there. Don't go away. I want to remind everybody, if you've got a whole bunch of rumply crumplies on the floor of your bedroom or in your closet, you got to get them dry cleaned and make them look nice so you look nice. Take them into Daryl's Cleaners at 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. Oh, Kevin and Cindy, I'm telling you, they are the best at what they do. And you're going to just sit back and smile like a Cheshire cat. Looking so good after you pick your clothes up at Daryl's Cleaners cleaners 1223 albion avenue in burley you stop in and see those really really nice folks today good morning caller you're on the air yes good morning zeb and it is a good morning it is my friend uh we have uh, some states out there that want to try to keep uh, donald trump off the voting ballot uh, this next election i don't know if it's legal to do that <laughs> But uh, I could just imagine what would happen if we had another eight years of uh, Obama uh, economy and uh, the welfare was cut off for all these undocumented insurgents that are in this country. I think we would have uh, a major catastrophe throughout the country. Unchecked rioting and everything else. You know, Tony, there is no end. Every day it proves to me that the airheadedness of the liberal left is becoming bigger and bigger. They've got enough air out there to blow up every basketball in the world, and they just act more stupid every day, saying they're going to stop his name from being on the election ballot, and they're going to do this, and they're going to do this, and they're going to reinvent the wheel with another Mueller report of their own magnitude. Tony, I'll tell you what, I would just love to hear something in the morning, tomorrow morning, any morning, that the Democrats and the Republicans are going to start doing what we hired them for, and that's to work for us, but that's not happening. Well, if we get too many of these people flooding into our country, and they're in our cities, we'd have mayhem break out in every major city at the same time. It's going to happen. I hate to be the uh, prof- uh, kind of a prophecy of doom and gloom, but it's going to happen. You know as well as I do that the American public in general has some common sense. But those on the sick left and the perverted left are the ones that are stirring the oily pot of hatred and everything else negative in this country. And I'm afraid we're going to see a mixture of oil and water, and boy, is it going to be a catastrophe. Well, our homes are going to have to become fortresses. I hope it doesn't go that far. I hope it doesn't go that far, but I'm telling you, the way things are going, I look to the future and say that there has to be a stomping out of evil, and it's going to happen. Tony, God bless you, man. Say hello to Mary for me. I am, too. Thank you, my friend. Caller, I'll be right there. Don't go away. I want to remind everybody about Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. They get there also early in the morning at 730 to better serve you with all, all your heating, cooling, and electrical needs. You know what? Six decades, over six decades. I mean, that is a long time to be serving this community, this area, with the best of your needs. So please, it's almost time for the air conditioning season. Make sure it's going to run right and very efficiently with the different air filters you can get right there for your conditioner at Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Number to call, 678 Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. You know, out of the 20 candidates that are running for president on the Democratic Party, Joe Biden is the biggest idiot of them all. Oh, I disagree. I mean, I watched him yesterday to the entirety of his rally 
and I couldn't believe what he was saying. No, I disagree with you. You're a dear, dear friend, and you and I have had the ability to disagree and still be friends. I look at people that I think are far, far worse and far, far less intelligent, and I'm talking about Pete Buttigieg. I'm talking about Julian Castro. I'm talking about Beto O'Rourke. I'm talking about John Hickenlooper. He proved that last weekend. I'm talking about Eric Swalwell. I'm talking about Kamala Harris. Oh, gee, I've almost gone through the whole list. Well, you know, the problem was I watched that thing intently, and he went over item by item of what Trump has accomplished, and yet he said it didn't happen. (laughs) It didn't happen. You know, you got to admit, Keith, when you listen to the news and you listen to Joe Biden or if you listen to Kamala Harris or Cory Booker, it doesn't make any difference. They live in a world that honestly is fantasy, cartoons, I don't know what, but they, they're they living in a time where capitalism in this country has provided an income and a growth factor and our economy's doing great, everything looks rosy, but they can't admit it. They won't admit it. They've got to paint a dark picture, and they're running out of ink. You know, Pennsylvania... I think it's Pittsburgh, was kind of the capital of the world when it came to making steel. You know, they were the greatest thing in the world, U.S. Steel. All of those were there. And then when Obama came along, they're gone. And now Trump has brought them back and everything. And probably three-fourths of the people in that rally were union people. Yeah. And they don't even recognize this? What's wrong with that? Well, I, there's, a, there's the $64,000 question. What is wrong with these people? I'm going to be elaborating on that a little bit. What's wrong with America? What's wrong with capitalism? And why in the world would these people just absolutely, they've got a brain, but they're not using it. Why are they leaning towards changing the best system in the world ever? That's the reason people want to come here is because of capitalism. We're going to be talking about that in just a minute. Keith, God bless you, and have a good day. Thank you so much. You bet. All right, sir. Hey, don't forget Denny's Restaurant. Oh, my. How about going on over there for Mediterranean grilled chicken? Or maybe a Cobb salad with a prime rib add-on. Oh, or how about for breakfast, all those delicious strawberry vanilla crepes. Oh, good eating at Denny's Restaurant. America's Diner at 611 North Overland and Burley and the other location at 291 Poline Road in Twin Falls. Stop in and see them today. Enjoy the people. Enjoy the great food at America's Diner, Denny's Restaurant, the home of Zeb's Lunch Bunch. I want to also acknowledge that, what is it, Thursday, I think I'll be going over there, yeah, Thursday to Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. And the main objective of Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, <laughs> I bit my tongue twice and it's hurting, Rehabilitation is to get you back to being you. That's right. They want you to get back away from all the aching and the painting and be happy and feel good about moving around and everything. Well, they know all the exercises, and they've got the hydrotherapy pool, the only one of its kind in the area. And Nick Greenwell and all the physical therapists can and will help you. All you got to do is give them a call at 678-1191. Don't bite your tongues. Have Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Really good folks. All right, calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Quickly, also, I want to remind you, uh, Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox have teamed up for your home comfort systems. That's right. And they're offering up to $1,700 in rebates on a new system. Ask about it. Find out about it. Call Ramsey Heating and Electric today at 678-0459 or visit them online at RamseysOnline.com. See the dealer for details. Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox. All right, your turn. Give me a jingle. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Capitalism 
has made this country great. That's You can't add anything more to it. Capitalism, not the evils of socialism or communism or any other ism, Capitalism has made this country great and afforded you and I with the best living conditions and lifestyle of anywhere in the world. Now, my question to you is this. I don't care if you're 74. I don't care if you're 54, 34, 24, whatever. Why? Why would anyone think for a moment... Uh, to change a system that has been so effective and so efficient and has literally made people very successful if they will work and try to achieve. (gasps) Oh, therein lies the rub. On the other isms, they want handouts. The other isms, they want the government to be their babysitter 24-7, 365. Capitalism, absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, stimulates freedom. And that's what the left hates. Capitalism has lifted the poor up if, if they provide the effort and they help themselves achieve. Think about that. Well, you can't tell people to work. Why? No. Yes, I can. We have too many deadbeats in this country today. We have too many derelicts that are too lazy to put their shoes on and go to work. Capitalism offers all sorts of opportunity for you. If you try, you can succeed in America. If you try personal responsibility oh they don't like that caller good morning you're on the air good morning sir this the people that want this socialism is the result of everybody gets a trophy Mm -hmm. that's true everybody has to work to succeed everybody wins When you say that, and I was just sitting here mulling it over in my mind, uh, it's absolutely a perfect analogy Uh, from Little League Baseball or soccer or whatever. Oh, we're not going to keep score. We're just going to give everybody a participation trophy. Aren't you happy? Stand there, raise your hands, and just enjoy the day. This is so stupid. It is absolutely killing our society, and I honestly, in the new Newsmax magazine, Doug, get it. If you haven't got a copy of the new Newsmax magazine for this next month, get it. I don't care where you have to find it, get it. I'll give you mine after it's dog-eared and all highlighted. But there is an excellent article in there about uh, Alexandria Cortez and Bernie Sanders and the rest of the socialist ilk, and it will scare you and put the hair up on the back of your neck. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're in, instigating a plan that they've been put in effect back in the 50s, where they were going to take this country over, turned into a socialist country, one step at a time. And how they do that, you brainwash the youth, and you take over health care and control the... <laughs> I, I do not understand, and uh, I'm an old man, you're younger than I am, so please help me, you know, guide me to a table, sit me down, and, uh, you know, graciously give me a glass of water and explain to me how anybody with half a brain, anybody with half a brain and common sense could ever look at our system, damn it and condemn it, and want to bring in an ism of socialism or communism. Why in the world would you want to take the neck of the golden goose and chop it off? Well, because they want power. The Democrats want power, and the only way they can get power is to control people. They can't get any power by policies because they have none. Their only policy is socialism. I mean, if you'll sit down and just use common sense and say, well, wait a minute, we're all the same, I don't want to be the same. 
I want to use the talents that God gave me, and I want to go out and I want to try to achieve. I want to be successful. I want this. I want to do this. And with that wanting to do more, you can help more people in mankind. That is capitalism. It's not socialism or communism. That's exactly right. And look at what the economy has done this first quarter. Yep. 3.2% with a, almost a 30-day government shutdown in January. And it grows at 3.2. You imagine what it would have done had they been open and running as it's supposed to? Well, here's my response, and tell me if you think I'm wrong. Doug Martin, if he wants to, he can work as hard as he wants to to achieve more over at Doug's Alternator and start a repair and maybe open up a chain of those stores across the United States. And then people can sit back on the left and they can say, oh, he was greedy, etc. But no, but what did Doug Martin really do by opening up a chain? He created more managers. He created more jobs. He created more income into the local communities and economy and that's what capitalism does exactly there's only one bad capitalism and that's crony capitalism that's what's happened in the obama administration with most of his shovel ready jobs going to his big money donors and they got nothing in return for it Doug, I'm very worried. Uh, Every day I do this program, and I get up early in the morning, and I call New York and Washington, D.C., and find out what's going on. Uh, Some of the stories, I want to get some thought from them as to what they think is going to take place. And like right now this morning, I believe it started about 10 minutes ago, there is a hearing going on this morning that the Democrats are really pushing Medicare for all. Now, I don't know your thoughts. Uh, I know you fairly well, but I don't know everything that you agree or disagree with. Medicare for all, like one doctor said early this morning at 4.30 on television, would be an absolute prescription for disaster. And he's right. Oh, yes. You show me where these Canadians, they have Medicare up there, basically. It's uh, everybody gets insurance and they tax people to pay for it. But why do a lot of the Canadians that have the money come down here to get operations? Because they can't get into their doctors. A one size fits all. A lot of people are dying or getting sicker every day because they're not being treated. And this is the idiocy and incompetency that's being promoted by the Democratic Party. I spare no ill will towards them because I'm going to heap more on them. It's stupidity personified and elaborated on. You remember that young child over in England? That I do. Had that disease. Yes. And there were some people in, I can't remember what country it was, said, bring him here. I think, yeah. we think we can heal him. We think we can. And the English government wouldn't let him go. They let the baby die. You know, this is something, I, I'm sorry, Doug, but I, I guess I'm missing a point here. If it were my child, my son or daughter, I guarantee you, I don't think there's anybody on the face of the earth that would want to incur my wrath and or my incivility. If my child needs treatment, I'm taking them. I don't care where I have to go. I'm going to get the tickets. I'm going to do whatever I can to help my child's life. How dare a government, any government, say no? Well, they'd have had to kill me to keep me from taking my That's right. out of that hospital. That's right. And that's exactly what's happened. But if you want one-payer health care in this country, we've already got it for our veterans. Yep. And look how it works. Look at the money that is spent. Look at how many employees the VA has for only about $8 million. Can you imagine that for 300 million? Well, the government would absolutely control you. The government would absolutely uh, give the thumbs up or the thumbs down on any treatment you need. Oh, well, wait a minute. Zeb Bell, he's an older gentleman. Well, he's not going to live that much longer anyway. Thumbs down on him. Next person. Exactly. That's a, and that is communism. That is control. Yep. If you want the government to tell you after you're born, once you reach old enough where you're not productive anymore, to put you out to pasture, no medication, no nothing, 
you're going to die. You, you got cancer. Oh, too bad. We can't. We can't even help you there. Oh, you need a hip replacement. Uh, no, you're you're not worth fixing. Absolutely. And this is the point. The government basically decides. There's the key word. The government basically decides. Not your doctor or who was your doctor. The government is going to decide, well, that's too expensive. Hip replacement for him. No, his quality of life doesn't mean anything. We'll perhaps provide it to somebody younger. Doug, I'm not exaggerating. You know I'm telling the truth. You are. You're speaking the truth. And the Democrats will not say that. I got to run. I'm already about five minutes late on my time frame. I got to run. Everybody, let's do what we can for senior centers. Let's support them. Go eat lunch there. Donate if you can. Thanks, Doug. Oh, my goodness. Right now, I also want to remind you about our friends at Rain for Rent. Oh, good, good folks. Hello, Jake and the crew. And believe me, I know they started earlier this morning. They are out and helping everybody. It's irrigation season, and time cannot be wasted. I'll tell you, you better get a hold of Rain for Rent at 438-5065. They're located at 134 South, 600 West of Paul. Jake and the rest of the crew, Reinke Diamond Dealers, and, of course, a very dedicated sales staff, knowledgeable sales staff, helping you with all your irrigation needs. Don't put it off. Stop in or give them a call, 438-5065. Rain for Rent, really good people serving you. Get a hold of them today. Caller, I'll be right there. Also want to remind everybody about Ark Animal Hospital at 750 21st Street near Connection Credit Union in Hayburn. Hello, Dr. Bill. Hello, all the folks that work over there. Really nice, knowledgeable people. I'm telling you, it's a mixed animal practice, meaning large or small. They take care of all of them, every one of them. Dogs, kitty cats, dairy cattle, it's all there. And let me tell you something they care. They care about the health of your animals and the welfare of your animals. Give them a call today if you need help. 678-1177. Ark Animal Hospital, they do have the warm hearts for the cold noses. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Mr. Bell. You know, I am really sick and tired of these gated community politicians and these new liberals coming out that think they know everything. They have not a clue as to what I need personally. That's right. Or what you need personally. So who the heck do they think they are telling me that they're going to do all this this stuff and all it's going to do is ruin the country? You know, it's becoming so prevalent and so obvious that I'm not just going to pick on the Democrats, Donna. I'm going to pick on Republicans, too. There are so many people that are representing us, and I hate to use that word terminology, representing, because really they're not, that are back there wearing the wingtip shoes and the three-piece suits or the ladies with the fancy dresses and the high heels and everything that have not got a clue as to how to get their hands dirty in the soil or maybe uh, run some kind of an 8-to-5 job and then leave at 5.30 and go back and do another job to try to raise their family and support their kids. They have not got a clue clue and yet they are the ones that are making the decisions as to how we live it's asinine oh i'm right there with you it's republicans and democrats um i I just i'm i'm picking on the democrats because they've got all these newbies um who think they're yeah they've never really held a job um beto o'rourke he wouldn't be where he is today if his wife didn't have money Beto O'Rourke, uh, and I mean this when I say this, please, uh, for those out there in the area that are offended by my really uh, hitting the nail on the head and pounding it through the board, Beto O'Rourke at age 46 is absolutely one of the most incompetent, one of the least knowledgeable people on the Democratic ticket for nominees. He absolutely has no business being there because, honestly, in a debate, he would be standing there passing out cookies. He's not very smart. Oh, I totally agree. Every time he comes on, I just want, I laugh my butt off. If you tied his hands, he couldn't talk. Oh, there you go. You're another person. Yesterday he called me on the on the phone and said, you know, Beto O'Rourke, if you tied his hands behind him, he'd absolutely turn into a mute. <laughs> yes, he would. You know, and, and, and uh, 
I mean, walk a mile in their shoes, and I'm sure you probably realize just how really stupid they are. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what they're leading this country into. And I, for one, do not want socialism. I don't want them telling me what doctor I have to go to or what surgery I can have. Absolutely. And that's exactly what's happening in Canada um, I, I think I've told you before, you know, my brother's lived there for 40 years, yep. raised his family there. His wife and he both have been very sick um, with different things. You're right. It took my sister-in-law a year and a half to get into a specialist to take care of her. Yeah, th- that's it's ridiculous. My brother, yeah, it's taken my brother almost six months to get in just to get a test done to confirm that he has prostate cancer. Well, it's just like this morning, though, Donna, and I hate to interrupt you, but I'm running short on time, but it's just like this morning. We've got a bunch of people, people that really haven't got the combined sense of a herd of Angus cattle, and they're back there in Washington, and they are making decisions about trying to force and coerce us, the United States, to go on a Medicare one-size-fits-all. I'm telling you, I'm so outraged over this. I would like to grab all of them by the short end of the necktie and just turn them until they turn red like a cheap thermometer. They don't understand because they're not very bright. Well, they have no, they have no experience. That's part of the problem. They have no experience. They've been told all these things are great, and that's what they believe. And, you know, you can't, if we the people don't stand up, we get what we pay, you know, we get what we deserve. Well, get a copy of all the different uh, Democrats that are running for the office, perhaps, of the presidency. And I don't care who you're talking about, whether it's Kamala Harris or Amy Klobuchar or any one of them, and they absolutely are all drawn to the center of socialism, socialized medicine, Medicare one-size-fits-all, portions of or major acceptance of the Green New Deal, get rid of fossil fuels, go live in a cave and wear figs. I I tell you something, Donna, we're in trouble, but the naivete of the American public, most of us are not speaking out and condemning what they're doing. Well, I, for one, I try to to encourage people to to read between the lines, because like I said, if we don't, if we get them elected, if we let them be elected, we're, we're sunk. We're done. We're done. We are. are so. God bless you, my dear friend. Thank you so much. You bet. You have a wonderful day, my friend. I appreciate it. Thank you. Don't forget Barry Equipment and Rental Sales Service and Parts. And they've got three locations serving you. 159 West Highway 30 in Burley, 465 Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls. Hello, Eli. And the Napa location. I tell you, when you need to get down in the dirt, I mean get down in the dirt, lifting and digging and pushing and carrying, they've got all the loaders and the excavators and everything right there for you. The Doosan loaders and the Bobcats, all the different sizes of the Bobcats. What are you waiting for? Get a hold of them today, and they can help you with equipment rentals and retail equipment sales at Berry Equipment and Rental. Burley, Twin Falls, and Napa. You get a hold of Berry Equipment and Rentals today. I want to also urge you to get a hold of our friends. You know, I can't think of anything I'd rather not do, then stand there and pump out a septic tank. Oh, please. And liquid waste removal and sewer and sink drain lines cleaned. Oh, please. No. I know the people to call, though. Dino Septic Service. Mm Mm-hmm. Great folks. And they've recently expanded to better serve more and more people. You need to call them today. Fast, fair, friendly service. And uh, the number 436-6526. Or in Burley, 678-1638. With that big truck that says, smells cargo on the way. I giggle every time I can't help it. Dino Septic Service, you get a hold of them right now. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Seb. <clears throat> I have a question. Um, I understand that it is it is difficult for the veterans to get the health care that they need. And I don't like to see that because they have served us so well. What? But my question is, why do we have any more 
so many people begging on the streets. You know, that is really... You look at L.A. and San Francisco, and you look at Denver. Denver's got a big problem of homelessness on the street. And... Salt Lake? Yeah, Salt Lake City. I mean, it, it's coming to a, a town near you, kind of like a theater. Yeah, you see them. But, but let me ask you this, Linda, and I'm not trying to turn a question around and, and not answer it or deflect from it. I don't know if it's the easy way out. I don't know if it's because a large part of our society is so committed to destroying their lives with drugs, etc. I don't know if they've just given up and they've lost their will or their want to use their own personal integrity and responsibility to go out and try to succeed. I don't know. I can't put... And, and I'm sure you can't either. I can't put myself in their mindset to totally just lay on a sidewalk or a street all day long and all night. I don't understand what's going on in this country, except that I think people, because of a laxity in our school system, have lost the personal responsibility that we normally in the past taught in the school system to go out and be all you can be. Well, you know, I, I, I think our, our younger people may think, uh, not all of them, but uh, quite a number may think very differently because I have seen the training for a different outlook while I worked in the schools sometimes. Mm-hmm. There were conferences on... Uh, you know, looking toward the future, but looking environmentally, looking globally. Well, let, let me interrupt you. Let me interrupt you, my dear friend, and ask you this. I, I'm going to go back to the 60s when I was in high school. And our guidance counselor at that time was absolutely the worst guidance counselor in the history of guidance counselors. I mean, they just basically, for those that were straight-A students, you know, they welcomed the door open so that they could figure on getting them to the University of Wisconsin or the University of Minnesota or Harvard or Yale. But for people that didn't want to go on to college but were still very, very good students and wanted to be successful, they didn't talk about the trade schools. They didn't talk about being a plumber and an electrician, which today would give you a good strong six-figure income almost overnight. I mean, they didn't talk about that. The the work ethic and people that wanted to work, they kind of shunned them by and said, oh, well, go on and be a rocket scientist. And that's not appropriate for all people. No, it isn't. <laughs> Excuse me. And I, I think in quite a number of cases when I've talked to people who have managed businesses or owned them, the work ethic among the young people is very poor. And now they're getting to the point where they cannot communicate. They don't know how to talk to each other because they are so busy on cell phones. Well, you know, you just said something that needs to be elaborated on. I'm down to the last minute before I've got a weather forecast, Linda. But you just said about the work ethic. That's not being taught. And when you make or say to your children, now when you get home from school, I want you to go do this. I want this done. I want you to go over there and fix that fence. Uh, I want you to take out the trash, whatever it is. If they live in town, there are certain things that need to be done. Wash the windows or whatever. <gasps> oh! That's terrible. You're making that child work. That's the attitude of the American public today, and we're at fault for this. Yeah, it's a lot of things are happening that need to be changed. I, I think they probably do need to be changed down at the bottom yeah. end where our kids are growing up and being taught. Absolutely. Linda, you're always welcome on this program, World's Greatest National Anthem thing- Singer. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank God bless. You. Thank you. Caller number two. Now, you've been so patient, but I'm going to ask you to be patient for 60 more seconds. I've got to get a weather forecast on here really fast. Brought to everybody by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, and they are right behind the Minidoka Hospital across from the emergency room, and the number to call, 312-0957. That number again, 312-0957. The very best serving your hearing health needs. Dr. Pickup, Dr. Mitchell, Dr. Hunsaker, 
and they know, oh, they know all the various things that can cause hearing ailments. So please get a hold of them today for a hearing screening. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, and right now, here's the weather. Definitely spring-like conditions for today, and we are expecting mostly cloudy skies, a little bit of a breeze, high of 49. Tonight, we do have a slight chance of rain, possible snow showers up in the higher elevations with a low of 30. For tomorrow, again, partly cloudy skies, expecting a high of 56 with an overnight low of 34. Warming up for Thursday, partly sunny skies, high of 63. Then as we make our way towards the weekend, going to be warming up into the mid-70s by Sunday, possible 77 under mostly sunny skies. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zephyr's Ranch. I appreciate it, Gina, and brought to everybody by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Yep, the number to call. Please do it today. 312-0957. Caller, you've been very patient. Go, please. Yes, you, you know, you were talking about health care for all. You know, a good example of that is the VA, which I belong to. But you know what? There's a lot of these veterans that are my age or older, and they've lost their wife. And, you know, they're lonely to talk to somebody, and they'll go to the VA. I got a little sniffle. I got this. I got the sty in my eye. You know, just little minimal things. And here there's people waiting that really need help. Yeah. And they simply don't have enough help to do it. And they do a good job. I mean... The best they can with the resources they have. Well, but when you put everybody in the pile, nobody gets good service. There you go. But you know something, Keith, and I'm going to maintain and stand behind this statement. We spend roughly about a hundred and twenty billion with a B dollars a year on illegal aliens coming into this country. And the cost of the management, the cost of getting them here, the cost of caring for them, uh, the basic look at what's going on the border right now. The costs are just skyrocketing. We're talking $120 billion. Now, if we had a border that was secure and we didn't have to spend and waste 120 30 billion dollars a year on that and we applied it back to our veterans and our service people that absolutely have put their lives on the line for this country my question to you is wouldn't that money be much better spent certainly would be i i don't understand how the government works but what they need to do is form another Department. Uh, you said you didn't understand how the government works. Departments of these. Yeah. Uh, every department takes a lot of people, and they creates another expense for the United States government. It's just absolute bureaucracy that is wastage. And wouldn't you like, honestly, answer this question shortly, uh, very succinctly? Wouldn't you like to be the president for the day? to go through every department and just literally put a red mark over the doors of the people that you don't need. I think you would run out of red paint. You certainly would, and you haven't accomplished it. Now, Don. There you go. <laughs> Keith, God bless you, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right, sir. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4567. I just, honestly, I know there's people listening out there that just absolutely hate me so bad, but they listen so that they can get together after the program and, oh, that's a bell dog on him, or words to that effect are stronger. But please, somebody call me and explain that's on the liberal left, or a Democrat, or, heaven forbid, even a socialist. Please tell me why. Why would you want to get rid of a system that has made this country the greatest country on the face of the planet ever? Ever! Why would you want to trade capitalism in and replace it with another ism, socialism or communism, what else, or whatever, and throw away something that has helped make this country so great? All of us absolutely should chase 
these socialist people and their terrible ideas out of Dodge City once and for all. This is ridiculous. Don't forget our friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox, and they've teamed up for your home comfort systems. Absolutely. For the Lennox home comfort systems, along with Ramsey Heating and Electric, they're offering up to $1,700 in rebates on a new system. Check it out today. How do you do it? Call them. Ramsey Heating and Electric at 678-0459 or visit them online at RamseysOnline.com. Terms and conditions apply. Be sure and check it out. Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. See, when we don't know our history... And we don't have the gumption to find out. You know, we've, been, we've become lazy as a, as, a, as a society. We take things for granted, food, safety, everything. And we, we, we just don't care. We don't even care enough to, to, to you know, let's face it, slothfulness is, is killing us. Yep. You know, if, if you don't know how to go out and work and and love to work, I love work. And I want, you know, if you don't know how to go out and get her done, you know, think about how, you, it's just like it, you drive into Walmart and there's the same guy sitting there, you know there's nothing <laughs> wrong with him making. I just don't want to say, there's plenty of jobs. Behind every semi, we need drivers. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, Randy, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Have you, in your construction business, when you've seen that same individual panhandling and being lazy and doing nothing, have you gone up to him or rolled your window down and said, okay, jump in the pickup, come with me, I'll pay you X amount per hour, and we need this job done, come and work. Normally, you will see them gather things up and run like crazy. Oh, hell yeah. See, I'm a garage door contractor primarily. We build shops and garages and stuff. It can be very dangerous, and if you don't know what you're doing, and you get hurt, or you do something wrong, and the door comes down, and somebody else got hurt, it just it's just not an it's just not an option. So you got to train them. But you see, even though, you know, there's just tons of work. We can't even we're importing truck drivers up here from Mexico because we can't find enough here. Yeah. The other day on I-70 in Colorado, a Hispanic truck driver wrecked into a, it was a massive, terrible mess. And I wonder if he had a Mexican CDL and was he legal or illegal? You know, those are questions. Those are questions when I saw the footage on that accident, terrible accident. I remembered what you had said on the program one other time, and it's worth, it's worth checking into and trying to verify. Randy, I've got to run, but I want to tell you how much I appreciate your comments because it's the truth. I am sick and tired of a society that will not take personal responsibility and get up and go to work. Thank you so much. Bye. All righty. Uh, uh, caller, uh, yes. Oh, you're all right, sir. Oh, I thought we had another call waiting. Oh, we do. I'll do the commercial and be right with them. Stand by. Caller, I won't be long. I just want to tell everybody about what's going on at your Magic Valley. Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you with a great big spring tire sale. Mm -mm. Get into any one of the locations, save money on the best of tires, all the different tread designs, sizes for your cars, your pickups, your SUVs, horse trailers, boat trailers, <laughs> whatever you need tires for. Get in there and make sure you take advantage of saving money at the big spring tire sale. Now, also check out all the brake service and the front end alignments and the shocks and the struts and the batteries. But above all, the service to you. These people really, really care. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley. Yep, the best. Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. Caller, I've got a minute. Go. <laughs> I'm almost forgot what I was going to say. Um, I think that we need to look around our our neighborhood and see what 
the children in our neighborhoods are doing so that we can kind of gauge what kind of a future we're going to have because those are the kids that are going to be taking care of us. And I think that it's really sad that the parents are so busy trying to make a living that lots of times their children are not being raised with a work ethic. And then when it's time for them to work, they they are pretty particular about what they want to do. Yeah. And and they want hours, you know. And I'm a farm family, and when we hire somebody, we kind of expect them to know that they might have to work a little longer than an eight-hour day. And that's I think that's what's ruining our country. There are so many rules about hiring somebody mm-hmm. and what you can do and what you can't do. And guess what? We have to bring our help from Mexico. You know, and I'm I'm really considering doing a uh, three day series on this about employment, work ethic, etc. And Chris, I appreciate your call this morning as always. But uh, stay in touch with me, and I'm going to put that together hopefully around the next uh, couple of weeks or so. Thank you so much. Well, I, I listen to you all the time, so I'll be around. All right, thank you very very much. Okay. Got to take a run to the news right now from CBS. They're going to come in and mess up everything we've put. Together. Together, we'll be back in seven minutes. I think of all the music, I love that piano in that song. Good morning, everybody. Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations, serving you with a great big spring tire sale. And don't forget, too, some of our great advertisers like Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, helping you, you get back to being you. Right now, Old Wheels is over there at the main studio with this good word for Western Waste. From the canyons of the Snake River and all across southern Idaho, we're always the Georgia Circle. Western Waste Services, we care about our community, our resources, and this great land. Western Waste Services is lending a hand, always at your Well, you're getting ready for the big graduation party. You're going to have it out in the backyard. Or maybe you're getting ready for a family reunion or whatever the case might be. You've got the food all lined up and the plates. And <gasps> somebody forgot to order the porta potties. Well, don't fear. Don't fear because Western Waste is near. Absolutely. Always at your disposal, Western Waste Services. All the porta potties. All you got to do is just give them a call 734-6969 western waste services you call them today hey by the way don't forget on mondays at 10 30 we have green thumbs dirty knees and vicky's country gardens that lady knows more about gardening and shares her wealth of information every monday at 10 30 right here on zeb at the ranch by the way too ramsey heating and electric analytics have teamed up for your home comfort systems you better believe it if you're in the market they're offering up to seventeen hundred dollars in rebates on a new system all you need to do is call Ramsey Heating and Electric today and find out more. 678-0459. Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox with the Home Comfort Systems. I want to also quickly remind you about some other great folks on our program every day for years and years, and we really appreciate them for what they do to help the community. Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert with Joel Heward, the manager, his family, and his staff serving you. It's really a solemn responsibility that they have to provide the families they serve with the best possible support and comfort, and always, always up holding the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. Please call them today, 436-5636, Hanson Mortuary in Rupert. And Joel Heward also serving you and your family at Morrison Payne Funeral Home on East Main in Burley.
I don't think I've ever had this gentleman on my program before, but here he is in the spotlight. We say good morning to Mr. Spencer Brown. How are you, Spencer? Hey, good morning. Thank you so much for having me. No, it's our treat uh, because we're going to be talking about a subject that absolutely is near and dear to my heart, and I'd mention it almost every day on my program, what I think is the denigration of our Constitution and our amendments, especially the right of free speech. And I'll let you pick it up from there and tell us a little bit about who you are and what you represent. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, like you mentioned, my name is Spencer. I'm the spokesman for Young America's Foundation, and we've been around since the 1960s, uh, working to make sure that young people, first of all, hear conservative ideas, but then are inspired by them, and then are able and equipped to share them with their peers. And, you know, we've been doing this since the 60s, uh, but what we see today is sort of a new new effort or a new campaign by the left to completely shut out conservative ideas, to demonize conservative students in the classroom, and to prevent them from holding events on their campuses. So everybody from Ben Shapiro to Katie Pavlich, uh, basically if you're a conservative, you're treated as a threat of uh, safety threat to the students on these campuses. And so we push back against that. We file lawsuits against universities. We expose what they're doing to the press in order to make sure that people are aware of what it's like to be a conservative on college campuses today and also to make sure that these schools don't get away with continuing to act like this. Uh, basically trampling the First Amendment rights of conservative students. Spencer, simple question and kind of a naive question, really, but how and why did we, the American public, ever let this problem get this big? I mean, how and why did we ever let the curtailment of our free speech start in the first place? Well, I think if you look at how this took place in higher education, especially, there are some parallels you can see to how you know big government abuses also take place, where... These universities are just these masses of bureaucracy where there's all these administrators at different levels and approval processes and policies. And so I think for a a while there, basically, these universities were getting away with it. People just didn't realize what was happening, or they chalked it up to the fact that, oh, the university has its process. They have to go about it this way or that way. Um, But I think, you know, now looking at, obviously, you know, I've been out of college a couple of years now, but just in basically my generation, um, we've seen the larger public and the larger culture really have to take note of what's happening on college campuses because we see some of the insanity that has been tolerated and encouraged in higher education has now spilled over into the mainstream where now, you know, uh, major corporations are having to deal with this sort of problem. You have an entire generation of students who have now graduated and gone into the real world and are unable to, uh, you know, act like adults in a place where they have to handle diverse ideas or work with other people who don't think the same as they do. Um, And so I think, you know, thankfully people are finally taking notice. Um, But I do think for a long time, you know, these universities got away with it. And so that's why we work so hard to make sure that they don't get away with it anymore. You know, I'm absolutely appalled that uh, our country is in the state of affairs that it is in today. And uh, colleges and universities have dedicated, well, you can't say this here, but if you go over by that oak tree about 400 yards off in the distance away from the sidewalks, we have a little area chalked out where you can sit and talk about your free speech all afternoon. This is insanity, and I can't imagine why we're not in an uproar and stopping this foolishness well yeah those free speech zones are one of the more nefarious ways that universities try to sort of suppress conservative speech or just any speech really you know in all of these situations we're always fighting for the first amendment you know first and foremost obviously it's conservatives who are often the victim of these policies um but you know what we're working for really opens up these campuses to all students who want to share their ideas or assemble or have events and so you see things like these free speech zones where they're told you know just because you're in the United States doesn't mean that you actually have First Amendment rights on these campuses, which is absurd, especially in the case of state universities, where the entire campus is a free speech zone. And obviously, you know, not to get in the weeds, but there are uh, constitutional time, place, manner restrictions that can be placed on events. But what we see is they're using unconstitutional, viewpoint discriminatory restrictions in order to try to shut up conservatives. And so those free speech zones go hand in hand with the speech codes where they tell you what you can and cannot say in the classroom. Obviously, you have sort of a a little bit softer version of those speech codes and the idea of microaggressions, where students are told that, you know, if you uh, refuse to call somebody by their preferred pronouns or 
uh, even just mistakenly call them by the wrong pronoun, that constitutes a microaggression, and you might have to attend uh, what's been known as mandatory sensitivity training. Uh, it's just absurd how they've basically taken what you read about in 1984 and just inflicted it on college campuses. Spencer, I'm going to be very rude and ask you this question, but I think it uh, bears mentioning into our conversation. How old are you right now? I'm 24. Six years old. Okay, 26. Please explain to me, and you're a young man that's got a lot of common sense, you're very articulate, etc., but please explain to me how conservative speech and talking about perhaps maybe the Bible or talking perhaps about the uh, LGBT movement in this country, how it's taken over and a demanding source trying to take over our education system, etc., why we can't speak out and why all of a sudden that speech is is deemed hurtful hurtful, and uh, very harmful to our society. Why? Well, so what we see with that situation is just sort of the end result of years and years of professors and administrators treating students with kid gloves, where they're taught that their feelings are the most important thing, not, you know, God forbid, learning or having a free and open dialogue. They've been taught that their feelings are the most important thing. And that if they are ever made to feel uncomfortable or made to feel like maybe they're wrong, that that is a sort of a cardinal sin in campus culture. And so what you see is students now treat anybody who doesn't agree with their individual truths, treating that as an existential threat to their personal safety. And so in that way, being made uncomfortable is now considered a violent act. And so if you are a conservative and you show up on a campus or if you're a conservative student and you dare to raise your hand in class and ask a question or assert a fact that you know to be true, you have committed an act of violence. And so in that way, speech is now violence, which is obviously ridiculous, especially in college campuses where you're supposed to be discussing different ideas, you're supposed to be broadening your horizons, you're supposed to be hearing and learning new things. And instead, they're just kind of getting this reinforced indoctrination where you get the ideas from the left, but you're never even allowed or permitted to hear a conservative idea. And we've had instances where uh, college roommates have even reported their other roommates for watching Ben Shapiro videos on YouTube in their dorm room. Oh my. Being a microaggression or being a, an incident that, you know, it, um, almost amounts to violence. And it's just ridiculous because these are grown adults who should be acting and behaving like adults, but instead they throw temper tantrums anytime they're made to feel uncomfortable. And the interesting thing, too, is they don't even really necessarily know what they believe. They just know, I know these buzzwords, I know socialism, I know, you know, racial injustice. But they don't understand what that actually means or the truth of it. And that, of course, is also the fault of higher education. You know, Spencer, I've got so many questions in so little time. And we also have a caller calling in right now with a question for you. We'll take the call, and then I'll revert back to some of my other thoughts. Caller, quickly, you're on the air, please. Well, the problem you have, it's like you said, Spencer, was they don't know enough to have a real conversation with them. They cannot defend what they claim to believe. See, when you're a a student at a university or college and you don't know enough, you say, what have you done? How is it that you've gotten where you are? What, how, who the hell passed you and let you get this far? I've spoke to students and their understanding of economics was, was appalling, was so ignorant that it scares the hell out of me, you know? And so I I do not know what we do and how it changes, but I know this. They're so afraid to go against the grain. Their peer pressure is so immense that they just go along, and maybe they just give up. I I don't know. I'll hang up. Uh, Respond to the caller, if you would, please, Spencer. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's right on. You know, these students, I think one of the clearest examples of how they're not being, you know, actually taught why they believe anything that they're told they should believe uh, is if you look at how socialism has become popular again among millennials, where that idea, you know, obviously was more or less left on the ash heap of history along with communism and socialism. Uh, but now you see students who are, or uh, Marxism rather, and you see students now coming back and saying this is a great idea, we should try it. And it's because they're not actually learning what socialism is what it actually does, and ultimately what its result is, because obviously a professor can't teach the history of socialism and expect anybody to go along with it or think that it's a good idea. And so instead they've just been told socialism is good, capitalism, the free market is bad and oppressive, and so students will will parrot that, but then if you challenge them on it, they've never learned the facts, because if they were told the facts, 
they probably wouldn't believe it in the first place. Spencer, let me ask you this, and make a statement in the form of a question, I guess. But we were talking about capitalism in the first hour of my program this morning. And I'm an old man, but I absolutely cannot understand. Help me. You're quite a bit younger. Help me how I can possibly understand how you can take capitalism and all the greatness that it has provided for this country, all the opportunities it's provided for the citizenry and this country, and turn it around, throw it down in the trash can, and say you want to adopt socialism and get rid of personal responsibility, get rid of people trying to succeed to do better and be better for their community, and accept a form of government and literal uh, uh, control of people that is going to keep people in a shell under a blanket and not let anybody live up to their talents that God's given them. Why in the world would young people want to stymie themselves like that? Well, the ultimate irony there is these institutions who are pushing this socialist narrative are only powerful and prestigious because of the free market and because of capitalism in the first place. Um, but, I mean, if you look at the situation, what the left has done is corrupted the term capitalism so much through their use of the media and culture and pop culture um, and got into the point where, you know, the idea of capitalism is just considered evil on all these campuses. Um, but the problem is they've corrupted sort of the fundamental part of the American dream, which is the whole idea of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You know, it doesn't guarantee happiness. It guarantees you the right to pursue that happiness for yourself. Um, And so what we see is the left has taken it, and instead of saying, you have all this incredible opportunity living in the greatest country on Earth at one of the greatest times in our history, instead they say, if you don't get equality of outcome from a system, it is evil and oppressive because it keeps some people down. And they never recognize the fact that everyone is created differently. You know, we're all created equal, but we're all gifted with different talents and different dreams and different goals. And so for them, the idea that not everybody ends at the same point means that it must be a corrupt system. Absolutely. Obviously, that's not the case. You know, if you look at the United States history, it's because of our free market system that has allowed us to become the greatest nation. But they, of course, the left, looks at this and says, okay, but there were people who made less than other people at certain times in history. Therefore, we must get rid of this entire system and instead embrace this evil system, but one that at least promises free everything, free college, free health care, free uh, working wage, all this ridiculous stuff. And again, they don't have facts to back it up, but they don't need it because it's so corrupted education that they can teach an idea without teaching any of the facts. Let me ask you real quick, and then we'll take another call, Spencer, but uh, you're in the age bracket of the millennials, the bulk of the millennials, not all of them. I certainly don't want to denigrate all of them, uh, but the bulk seem to want a tin cup and a handout and government control. But when you look at this situation with the Alexandria Ocasio-Cortezes and the Bernie Sanders and the Beto O'Rourke's and basically a socialized program for the United States, on a 1 to 10 scale, one being not bad, ten being really dangerous. Where are we on that scale, according to you? Well, I would say from what I see, especially on college campuses, we're probably around a seven, seven and a half. Wow. Um, And that is because young people have bought into this idea so much without understanding the consequences of it or the complete sort of uh, pie-in-the-sky chance of it actually happening that there are a lot of young people who are making more or less risky personal decisions based on a flawed ideology um, that is going to really do them harm in their future. You know, when I went to college and enrolled, I signed uh, that master promissory note to get my federal student loans to help me pay for my schooling. And after I graduated, you know, I'm still paying it off, but I'm paying it off to make sure that, you know, that was an obligation I took on. But now you have people acting as though all of their college loans are going to be forgiven. They're going to have a guaranteed minimum wage or a guaranteed living wage. They're going to have free health care. They're, they're expecting to have a government that will take care of them from, you know, on the younger end of the millennial scale once they get into college, basically all the way through their lives once they get up in Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid. But all you have to do is actually look at the facts and realize that none of what these candidates or these people are promising can become a reality without basically destroying our economy in the process. Absolutely. Hopefully it never gets to that point. But you have all these people who have bought into these ideas and are expecting a government to take care of them who have basically given up the idea of personal responsibility to that end. And that does a ton of damage to these people who really should be, you know, pursuing an education that will allow them to get a job, be gainfully employed, and to be able to, you know, build their lives. And instead they've been told in the classroom that they are always going to be oppressed, this intersectional idea of this matrix of oppression they're told that they don't have personal responsibility. 
And to me, that is incredibly demeaning for young people who should be starting their lives optimistically and also just has a horrible effect on, I think, you know, a workforce and a generation. Absolutely. So well put. Thank you very much. Caller, with your question, go ahead quickly. I'm almost out of time, real fast. Well, the whole problem is our education system. Um, the college students all want uh, socialism. They want to, last election, want to divert vote for Bernie Sanders. What are we going to do to get us out of the United Nations Common Core? Um, that's a real stickler with me in federal aid to education. They get all of these guidelines. The, the kids that are coming out of high school are all good little socialists, according to a professor friend of mine at a university here. What are we going to do to, to, to turn this around? Because this... Right now, our kids are all being radicalized into socialism. I agree with you. That's a very good question. Good question, Adrian. I'm going to have him answer it on the air. I'm almost out of time. Uh, Spencer, re uh, address your remarks to the caller, please. Yeah, absolutely. So actually, at Young America's Foundation, our fastest growing section of programs are high school programs because we've seen that happen, where now what used to be reserved for college campuses is now being pushed on high school students. And so what we've seen, though, is young people are incredibly receptive to our ideas when they're in high school because they haven't been completely, you know, beat down in their, you know, wanting to think freely. And so we bring, you know, hundreds of high school students at a time out to President Reagan's ranch in Santa Barbara, California, which we owned and saved back in 1998. And we let them walk in President Reagan's footsteps and learn from his lessons and his example. And what we see is that when young people hear those ideas, they respond incredibly well, and they often turn into lifelong activists throughout high school and into college. And so they're definitely not lost. It just takes a lot of work to make sure that we reach them with our ideas, to make sure they have a chance to be inspired by those ideas of freedom, personal responsibility, traditional values. Uh, but we do find that those ideas are still incredibly strong and powerful among young people. You know, Spencer, I've got to ask you this as a favor. I'm putting you on the spot, but I hope you'll consent to coming back in the future, the near future. I've got a ton of questions I didn't get a chance to ask you about and circumstances I wanted you to relate to, especially what happened at California State University in Los Angeles. Will you please be available in another week, and I'll call and try to have you back on. Yes, I would absolutely love to do that. All right, sir. Spencer Brown, thank you so much for being on the program this morning. And uh, we're going to have him back. He's with, of course, a great group, Young America's Foundation. We appreciate his remarks, and God bless you, sir, and I'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. All right, sir. Wow. There is a sharp young man, and uh, it goes right along and in accordance with what we were talking about in the first hour of our program this morning. Capitalism and uh, the absolute necessity to retain capitalism in this great country, the United States of America. The Bernie Sanders, the Kamala Harris's. The Joe Bidens, the whole kit and caboodle, my grandmother used to say. Ay, 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 ay. Where are they going? What are they trying to do to this great country, the United States of America? Wake up. And like I said in the first hour, tell them to get out of Dodge City. This is ridiculous. Wow, we got to pay some bills, and then we'll have our next guest on the program momentarily. And I want to remind you about all, all the goodbyes for your beautification and comfortization. I don't know if those are words or not, but they sound good. At least furniture, floors, and more. Jeff and the entire crew, while well, they went to the warehouse and they said, well, we've got three of these, we got two of those, we got one of that, we got eight of that. We're going to put them all on sale and save our customers money. That's right, limited quantities, spring clearance sale event going on at Lee's Furniture, floors, and more. I mean, flooring and mattresses, everything. You better get in there and check it out today at prices that are absolutely unheard of. Lee's Furniture, Floors, and more at 459 Overland in Burley. Jeff, great guy, and his entire staff, very, very knowledgeable about what's going to look good in your home and make you comfortable at Lee's Furniture, Floors, and more. I know somebody else that really cares, too, and I'll tell you what, uh, that's Let's Ride. Vroom, vroom, get your motor running at 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. Oh, my goodness. Your, your first experience of going over there 
is to open up the showroom door and step back and go, holy moly, how did they get all this stuff in here? Well, that's really what happened to Deanna and I the first time we were over there. I mean, they've got so many four-wheelers and side-by-sides and everything, and they're just crammed full of fun for you. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays 9 to 4. Let's ride. Absolutely. Uh, And I want to stress the fact, too, that if you already have a four-wheeler and you want to get up in the hills and everything and start enjoying the great outdoors, be sure and get in there and have it serviced. They've got a wonderful service department waiting right now to serve you. Let's ride. 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the world. You better believe it. That's where the fun is sold at Let's Ride. All right, we're going to go back to the phone line right now, and we've got another guest waiting to come on our program this morning, and uh, we'd like to say a great big good morning to the founder and president of Power of the Future, and that's Daniel Turner. Daniel, good morning to you. How are you? Good morning, Zeb. Thank you for having me on. Oh, no, no, sir. It's my pleasure and privilege to have you on. Tell us a little bit about you, who you are, what you represent, and a little bit about Power of the Future. Yeah, so uh, thank you. I started Power of the Future about a year ago uh, with one purpose in mind, and that is to bring the battle back to the environmental movement. Um, I have been active in in public affairs and politics my entire life, um, living in D.C. and between campaigns and work on the Hill, etc. It was something that always bothered me, that uh, in the name of uh, fighting climate change or uh, protecting the environment, uh, green activists were always given a very wide berth, and they were allowed to propose legislation and ideas Uh, regardless of how crazy they were or how intrusive they were on people's liberties and rights and the damage it did to rural America, it was always given a pass because it had a noble intention. And I began to realize, especially during the previous administration's war on coal, that thousands and thousands of people were suffering under the Obama administration, under their green policies. Uh, 50,000 coal miners lost their jobs, and those are small towns that will, may never come back. And so I started a group to fight the environmentalists that really don't care about the earth. They don't care about climate change. They just care about progressive politics. And so I felt like I had to fight back. And so um, here I am. All right. Well, let me tell you where I come from, Daniel. And believe me, you have just uh, signed up in my army. You and I are on the same page wearing the same uniform. I find it absolutely ridiculous and almost a sin, if you will, what's going on in this country with the acceptance of the green energy program with Ocasio-Cortez or certain parts of it. It's going to bankrupt America. It's going to put us back in caves burning buffalo dung trying to keep warm. It's going to be totally regressive and hurt and kill the precepts of progress for America. That's my stand. You're absolutely right. And the Green New Deal is very little about energy or environmental policies. That's right. Because just logically, this is where I wish we had a media that did its job. Logically, someone needs to ask Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez if, as you say, we have 12 years left to fix this, quote-unquote, which she said four months ago, so I guess now we have 11 months and 11 years and eight months. But if we have just a limited amount of time to fix it before climate change happens, then why are we talking about health care? Why are we talking about racial and gender uh, uh, reparations for perceived injustices? Why are you talking about providing basic income for people unwilling to work? The Green New Deal addresses issues that are completely irrelevant to energy and climate issues. So why do you do that? And she does it because, again, in the name of green politics, you are given a wide berth to propose crazy outlandish things. Well, I'm just going to make a couple of statements about this, and I want you to jump in and tell me if you think I'm right or wrong. Uh, I have had many, many uh, scientists on my program, many scientists on my program, which dispute the fact that all scientists agree, and then they'll come out with newspaper articles, and they'll condemn anybody that asks questions. They'll come out and call us the naysayers, the uneducated naysayers. Listen, I've read some of these reports. 
I've got many of which are on my desk right now. And the hoax and the falseness of many of these climate reports purely based upon rhetoric and what they want us to believe for the simple word of control. That's what the left wants. It's not about climate change. It's not about doing this or that for the uh, thermometer. It's about control of the people, and I'll stand behind my statement. You're absolutely right. Uh, it is as unscientific to say that 97% of scientists agree as it is to see a commercial, and they say four out of five dentists recommend whatever, right? For, for, for that to be a, a scientific, to use the scientific method, to use the, the, the logical principles of deduction, to say 97% of scientists agree, mean that every single scientist in the world sat down with the same basic level of facts and, and data, and they all came to a conclusion. What they want to say is 97% of the scientists we invited to our group or who donate to our organization, they agree. But I can find a sample of people to say whatever I want. Um, so you're absolutely right. It is not about science. It's not about the climate. Uh, it is about control. And that's why AOC is talking about health care, uh, uh, Medicaid for all, basic income for all. What does that have to do with the environment? Again, operating under this 12 years left to fix it idea, you would think we would focus the, the target a little bit more on the actual issues, but we don't. Uh, Daniel, my concern is that the gullibility and, quite frankly, the stupidity of the younger generation, the millennials, not all of them, I don't want to lump them all together, but uh, a large percentage of the millennials have been uh, bitten by this bug by their professors and their universities into being duped into thinking that, oh my goodness, why, we've got to get rid of all fossil fuels. Oh my goodness, we've got to stop all uh, automobiles no more planes no more trains everybody's got to live in a commune and we got to share the same heating source how in the world are we going to counteract this absolute espionage and deterioration of our education system and turn this thing around and that's the biggest challenge we have is because the the younger generation is being indoctrinated with climate change and global warming language as just a part of their up, up, uh, upbringing. I receive so many letters from parents and teachers who send me excerpts of uh, textbooks and, and homework assignments that have nothing to do. There, it's an English assignment, but rather than find the, the, the improper comma in this sentence, the sentence is... Climate change will kill the planet, comma, and we have to do something. So it's an English assignment, but, but they, they get in their climate change, their global warming language. It is sad that our younger people are not taught the beauty of, of American entrepreneurship and, and ingeniousness. To think that the quality of life we have in this nation, what comes from fossil fuels, um, it, it really is remarkable. And every young person on their smartphone who's playing Fortnite, I wish for them to realize that's a fossil fuel, right? That comes from oil. Um, um, recreational vehicles, razor scooters that are now the, the common thing here. Again, all fossil fuels, all pro petrochemical products, it's something to celebrate. Uh, you, if you don't want to live with fossil fuels, you need to go to the countries that do not have them, and that is the Congo, that is Bangladesh, that is the South Sudan. But surprisingly, AOC, Bernie Sanders, the United Nations, the panel on climate change, they never hold meetings in those places, right? They never go to the places that have no fossil fuels. And I find that pretty telling. You know, uh, one thing, Daniel, I wanted to mention to you, and I'm sure you're aware of this. You're a very sharp guy. But when you listen to the Ocasio-Cortezes, and you listen to the Bernie Sanders, and you listen to the O'Rourke's and the Kamala Harris's, not one time, not once, when they make their speeches and go on their diatribe about green energy, etc., do they talk about, hmm, how are we going to raise our food? How are you going to put a propeller big enough on a John Deere tractor to get it down a field for planting or harvest? How are you going to get the crops to market? How are you going to get transportation across this country to go to the different supermarkets? They don't discuss it because they don't understand. No, 
and, and AOC, I think, is the biggest culprit of that because she will do uh, an Instagram video that will go viral in her kitchen. Uh, she did one in, in January, and she was cutting up uh, an, an avocado or lemons, I forget what, and she was talking about climate change. And I wanted to say not just your smartphone and the Internet and the electricity that's allowing you to make this video and transmit it in real time around the world, but the actual fruit that you're eating. Do you think the avocado in the middle of the polar vortex is grown locally in New York City? Or can you afford it at your local market because somewhere thousands of miles away it was cultivated, harvested, and shipped at a price that you can afford? That's what's amazing about fossil fuels. When you think of the amount of goods and products that we buy from, from flat screen TVs that are now affordable to the common person, to Gore-Tex jackets, which keep us warm in the middle of a polar vortex. But you're right, these, the candidates running for the Democrat nominee, they never talk about these things with a sense of wonder and awe. And, and quite frankly, and this is a harsh statement, but I stand by it, they never talk about America with a sense of wonder and awe. They never talk about the incredible things we do. They're a very pessimistic, bitter, and frankly, unpatriotic group of people. And I think the millions of men and women who are working right now in coal mines and on oil rigs and fracking, you know, every time we turn on our light or brew our coffee, we are indirectly saying thank you for them for their labor. And I wish they got some respect from the left. You know, and people like Camilla Harris and Wild Haired Bernie and the rest of them, you really have to question their education and their uh, their understanding of anything when they can't understand that the weather patterns in the world's history have all been cyclical. We've had our cold months and years. We've had our warm months months and years, but everything has been cyclical, not to say the least of what's going on right now. Actually, when you look at the spring with snow Saturday and Friday of this last week back in Minneapolis and down into my home area of southern Wisconsin originally and all across the country, it's been reverting to a colder trend. And that's what some of the scientists and climatologists are saying, that we're going into a cyclical change again. Exactly. And, you know, we've had a pretty much a 10-year lull in tornado activity. We've had some recent ones, but tornadoes have been relatively quiet the last 10 years. We had about a 10-year lull in major hurricane activity. Uh, everyone remembers Katrina, uh, but really things were quiet up until these last devastating ones in, in Texas and in Puerto Rico. So weather is cyclical. Weather patterns are cyclical. And what the climate change people... Again, they claim to be the party of science. They will always use this expression, the earth has a fever, the earth has a fever. It's such a terrible and unscientific phrase because we can have a fever as human beings because we have a base temperature. I don't know what the earth's base temperature is because millions of years ago, Saudi Arabia was an ocean. And, and hundreds of thousands of years ago, Greenland was covered in forests. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the Earth's basic temperature is because I can't control it, and we haven't been around for four billion years. So to say, well, the climate is warming, you're right, it is warming. But is it warming because we've been exceptionally cool the last thousand years? Or is it warming because of something else? Those are really interesting and, and, and good questions to ask. But in the climate change movement of, of, of socialist and green power, those aren't the questions they want to have. Yeah, but Daniel, when you get a chance to meet with some of these absolutely, uh, I guess, uh, uneducated people that really want to act like they know more than you and I, and you ask them the question, okay, you want climate change, you believe in climate change, and you blame it on human beings. Okay, please tell me, what is the optimum? What is the optimum that you want for the temperature, uh, different conditions around the globe? What do you want? And most of the people I've asked that question to, they can't give me an answer. No, it, and, and they don't know what they want, and they don't know, what, the, what again, what the baseline temperature should be. And, and that's why, that's why they, they, they are such an adamant movement, because they are an unscientific group of people. This is about, as you said earlier, and you're 100% right, this is about control. I have always believed, and, and I started the organization for this reason, 
one of the main reasons why the green movement is so adamant in their in their desires is because as true socialist believers they they hate the fact they they fight against the fact that this industry is privately controlled uh, there are public corporations right anyone can buy stock in them but it is not a government run entity and they want it controlled by the government you look at the world's leading dictators from stalin to hitler to hugo chavez the first thing they do when they get in power one of the first things they do is they take over the energy industry yeah. they always have to nationalize that's it. right you are a true socialist and bernie is one of them as is aoc you cannot have an industry as powerful and big as the energy industry in private hands. It must be run by the state, and that's why they're fighting for it. Absolutely. We've got a caller with a question. I'm almost out of time. Caller, go ahead quickly. You're on the air. Well, there's so much to this. See, the exaggerations by the left about the, 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 the rise in the temperature of the, of the Earth is, is, is so all over the map. You know, from various sources, it can be, you know, unbelievably different. And, and see, there's no real truth to it, because there is no truth to it. There's no, there is no solid evidence of what they say. And, and what they, if we were to do everything they said we should do, it wouldn't change a thing. It's so minute that they would never admit it. And so, you know, it's, it's such a shame but see, in order to, you know, we have a land of people that don't care, and they're easily misled. It's just like in Wyoming, they're trying to shut down two, four coal-fired power plants that are clean. And they're right next to uh, coal mines. The efficiency is second to none. But because of environmental pressure, a, a Portland or an Oregon-based source of, uh, you know, industry is shutting these plants down, and it's complete. It's unbelievable. I'll hang up. Uh, respond to the caller, please, if you would, Daniel. Yeah, he's absolutely right. And you can always show their inauthenticity by how they conduct their lives in private. But one of the biggest leaders of the climate change movement on the left is Bernie Sanders. Audit of his personal spending shows that he spends over $300,000 a month on private jet travel because that is how he wants to campaign, and that is convenient, and he has the money to do it. Uh, an audit of AOC's uh, spending shows that she doesn't take the New York City subway system, and she doesn't take Amtrak from New York City to D.C. She takes planes, and she prefers Uber and Lyft and ride shares. And my message to them is this. If in your personal lives you do not live what you want the coercive power in government to mandate that I live, then you are an inauthentic person, and I will never trust you. And as far as when it comes to Bernie or Bloomberg or AOC, if in their personal behavior they do not live these principles, then they have no right to dictate that government force me to live them. Let me ask you, I'm almost out of time here, Daniel, and I'm going to have you back. You're outstanding uh, in your pr uh, promotion of what your thoughts are. But how afraid are you right now as to the green movement with Ocasio-Cortez, Bernie, and the rest of these kooks? How afraid are you that portions of the Green New Deal are going to be implemented, put into effect, and how afraid are you they will be adopted by Congress? And that's a, a brilliant question, and I'm so glad you raised it. I started this movement because I felt like someone needed to say the things that, were, that needed to be said because people are afraid to say them. You are demonized when you do not believe in, in the green movement or in, in climate change. You're, you're ridiculed. You're blackballed. Um, I, I tend to believe that the Green New Deal is intentionally very extreme so that squish people on the right and, and comfortable people on the left who just want to get reelected will come up with some sort of compromise. There are a lot of people on the right, elected officials included, who are so afraid of this subject and f so afraid of the money of groups like NextGen, which is Tom Steyer's group, or the Sierra Club, or the League of Conservation Voters, that they say, oh, goodness gracious, I'll just sign on to this sort of squish deal. And, and this is the incrementalism of the left. The same way that a lot of people thought Obamacare was meant to fail so that we would get Medicaid for all, well, here we are 
10 years later, and that's the number one topic, Medicaid for all. So I do think, Zeb, you raise a great point. I think there is a real risk of getting incremental Green New Dealism, but I swear I'm not over my dead body because I'm going to fight for it tooth and nail. Absolutely, myself included. Uh, Let me read to you a very short paragraph that was written from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, and our local newspaper carried this last Sunday, and here it is. Scientists have long known that modern human industrial activity has produced higher concentrations of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere than at any time in at least the past 800,000 years. Now, my question to you is, Daniel, who did all the testing for 800,000 years? And and do you think that if you became a vegan, and I keep hearing your cow, that that would all end, right? That, that there would be no more greenhouse gases. And that's what the left wants us to believe. All these greenhouse gases for 800,000 years. So what was causing the greenhouse gases that many years ago and what's causing them now and if people think it's humans if they think it's mankind and our activity i don't think they realize the size of the planet the power of the planet the power of tides the power of 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 the sun Um, again they are an unscientific party and they Blame us for not believing in science when they're the ones who actually don't believe in science. Absolutely. I'm going to take one more call, and caller, I'm going to limit you to 30 seconds, and I'll have to cut you off. Go ahead quickly. Yeah, we've got this uh, stupid representative from this state that's in on this hook, line, and sinker from trying to be an environmentalist, save the salmon, you know. it Anyway. I I agree with you. You know, unfortunately, and quickly address this, if you would, Daniel, a lot of politicians are now leaning to the green energy proposals. I think it's manipulation, and they're being coerced, and they're not really studying what they're trying to get into. Would you agree? 100%. People look at the energy grid, the electric grid, like a diet. You know, your doctor would say, oh, I think you're eating too much red meat. You should eat more chicken or fish. And so you eat something else that's, quote, unquote, better for you. They say, well, boy, we have too much coal and and gas in our electric grid. We should use more renewables, and that's, quote, unquote, better. But the problem is that technology does not exist. It, It doesn't exist in right now in the marketplace to produce it, to store it. It could happen. I'm an optimist. Americans create the most amazing things, and I will never doubt American entrepreneurism. But reality is we are not there yet. So to say, well, we're going to close this nuclear plant like Governor Cuomo was doing in New York, to say we're going to ban fracking or stop coal, as your, your caller just said, and replace it with what? And when that happens and we have brownouts and we start our electric grid fails, who is going to suffer? It's children, it's poor, it's elderly, it's women, it's, it's the, the very people the left claims to care about. When there's a brownout and the hospitals are, in, are teetering, people who are on dialysis, people who are on machines, what's going to happen to them? When the sweltering heat in Florida and there's a brownout, who's going to suffer and die? It's always the very marginalized people the left claims to care about. People's lives are at risk as they play with the electric grid, but the politicians are st- too stupid and too self-absorbed to realize it. Okay, I'm a fan. i got to have this man back. Daniel Turner, founder and president of Power of the Future. You're one of the good guys. I'll give you a silver belly hat, and you can ride with our posse anytime. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you so much. Please come back. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I'm going to keep his name and number. He's going to be welcome here at the ranch anytime. Very, very nice man. Daniel Turner, and he knows what's going on. Knows what's going on. Oh, my goodness, I know what's going on in the weather. (laughs) Old Wheels is over there going, "Uh, Zeb, you might want to check the clock a little bit. (laughs) Okay. Hey, don't forget our weather brought to you this hour by Phillips Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. They've been providing the accounting services to the Minicash area for well over 50 years. They are the best, they are the most professional, and they can help you, your family, and your business with tax return preparation, tax planning, business consulting, retirement planning, etc. All of this and so much more. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. And right now, here's the weather. 
Definitely spring-like conditions for today, and we are expecting mostly cloudy skies, a little bit of a breeze, high of 49 tonight. We do have a slight chance of rain, possible snow showers up in the higher elevations with a low of 30. For tomorrow, again, partly cloudy skies, expecting a high of 56 with an overnight low of 34. Warming up for Thursday, partly sunny skies, high of 63. Then as we make our way towards the weekend, going to be warming up into the mid-70s by Sunday, possible 77 under mostly sunny skies. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zeppard's Ranch. Thank you, Gina. And right now, I want to remind you again, our friends at Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. As I say, over 50 years of the most professional accounting services in the Minicasha area. Call them today. Find out more. Offices in Burley and Rupert. Serving you, Phillips Oaks Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. Wow, coming up at 10.06, it's Tuesday, and he's just kind of waddled, there's a good word for him, waddled into the studio, and that's Dr. History will be coming up at 10.06. I want to remind you, too, that our dear friends over at Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert, the best of life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits, all of this right there at their office for you. Dedicated and responsive to your needs, all you got to do is give them a call at 436-4424. That number again, 436-4424. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. You get a hold of them right now, okay? Uh, what do we got cooking? Later on at 10.30, we've got a gentleman that wrote a book called The Fake Mueller Report. And he did it with kind of a tongue-in-cheek, kind of a humorous aspect. And uh, Kevin Pricelack will be on our program at 10.30 right after Dr. History. Oh, my. Uh, right now, we're going to get ready to send this back over to Wheels at our main studio. And tomorrow on the program, don't forget Dave Bego from Indianapolis, Indiana. And uh, also, we're going to have John Milkovic, a Democrat. Holy smokes. What's the matter with Zeb? He's got a Democrat coming on tomorrow. Yes, I do, because John, now from uh, Louisiana, originally out of Montana, absolutely has got his head together, and he knows what's going on in politics, and he's very open and honest about it. So we'll have him on tomorrow. Right now, we're going to send it over to CBS News, let them come in and mess up everything we've put together. We'll be back in seven minutes. Here we are. Yes, just one peachy little day. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Zeb at the ranch. I wish you folks could be in the studio sometime and watch the turmoil and the tumult that we have to go through when we have the cancellation of a guest and then we're sitting there going, uh, who's going to be on at the last minute? Well, it's not Ken Turner. He's here with us. Oh, Deanne, God bless you, my daughter. You are healed. Thank you very much. She found some information. I appreciate that. Well, you know, same thing. My wife. Apologize. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, I'm all nervous because I didn't have a guest for 1030, and now we do have a guest for 1030. Anyhow, Zeb at the Ranch brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. That much I do know. All seven locations with a big spring tire sale. And, of course, some of our great advertisers as I hurry along. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Helping you get back to being you. Quickly, I want to remind you, don't forget Ramsey Heating and Electric Analytics. All teamed up for your whole home comfort system. Say that fast three times. Lennox Home Comfort. Comfort Systems at Ramsey's offering up to perhaps $1,700 in rebates on a new system. Find out more. Call Ramsey Heating and Electric today at 678-0459. Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox. And you don't want to forget our friends over at Patterson's. Oh, my goodness, 421 East Main in Burley. Hello, Curtis. Hello, Lorena. Hello, all the staff. Excellent people that really do have all your electronic needs. Mm-hmm. They've got the best. And television sets, the best Samsung, Sony, Toshiba. They've got the TVs that make you want to run home, turn on the TV, turn, lean back in the recliner, and just enjoy. Hey, be sure and check it out. Home theater systems, car stereos and speakers, all of this and more at Patterson's 421 East Main in Burley, 678 
Six seven eight six nine nine seven Patterson's four twenty one East Main and Burley open Monday through Saturday nine to six. Wow, we've been gathering up and hurrying for the last couple of minutes. Uh, Ken, radio business is not all that it's cracked up to be. <laughs> uh, Zeb, I think this is the worst I've seen you hustling and rustling and trying to find stuff and. You know, your office is so well organized. I don't know easy, how you could easy, how easy, you could lose easy, something. Easy, <laughs> buddy. You, uh, you might consider yourself on real thin ice. Well, it looks a lot like my desk. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, no, yeah. but thank God, and I mean this for my lovely wife, if it wasn't for her. What happened, folks, real quick, and I don't want to take time away from Ken, but we had a last-minute cancellation. We verify and then re-verify everybody that's going to be on our program. And all of a sudden, last minute, we had a cancellation for the 1030 block. And it just drives you into a tailspin or elsewhere. And you saw it, Ken. (laughs) I did. I did. Well, let's get on with my show. Doctor History. Yes. So... Before we start, I want to say hi to Joshua and his family in Wisconsin, your old home state. What part? I don't know. Well, Uh, you should find these things out. Well, he emailed me, and he says they have dairy blood running through their... Well, that's the whole state. Yeah. Joshua, if you're listening, don't row that boat ashore. (laughs) Just give us a call and let us know where you're at. Yep. So, hi, Joshua and your family, and thanks for uh, your comments. All right. So today, we're going to talk about a guy that some people probably will recognize. His name is Joaquin Marietta Carrillo. Oh, yeah. All right. He went by only the first two names. Though. Right, Joaquin Marietta. Marietta. Yeah. And he's also called the Robin Hood of the West yep. or the Robin Hood of El Dorado. He was a 49er, a vaquero, and a gold miner who became a famous outlaw in California That's right. during the California gold rush mm-hmm. of the 1850s. Right. Now, the popular legend of Joaquin Marietta is that of a peace loving man driven to seek revenge when he and his brother were falsely accused of stealing a mule. His brother was hanged. Stealing a mule? Yeah. His brother was hanged, and Joaquin was horsewhipped. Oh, my. His young wife was attacked, and in one version, she died in Joaquin's arms. Oh, my. So, swearing revenge, Joaquin hunted down all who had killed his wife and got his revenge. You don't want to steal any jackasses, I'll tell you that. So, bands of his gang were not engaged in the horse trade. They robbed and killed a few miners, or they killed a few settlers. Just out of retribution. Yeah, just, well, whatever, yeah. Particularly those returning from the California gold fields. Really? So they probably robbed them as well. But the gang is believed to have killed up to 28 Chinese and 13 Anglo-Americans. Oh, my. And that figure only takes in account the reports from their raids in early 1853. So oh. the, the numbers could have been worse, or, you know, worse than that. But in 1919, there was a guy by the name of Johnson McCulley, and he supposedly received his inspiration for his fictional character, Don Diego de la Vega, better known as Zorro. Zorro. And this was from an 1854 book entitled The Life and Adventures of Juan or Joaquin Morietta, the Celebrated California Bandit by John Roland Ridge. There you go. So anyway, John heard about a Mexican miner who had turned to banditry and was intrigued by the story. So that's where, you know, if you've seen the movie, the latest Zorro movie, that kind of follows Did you ever that. watch the TV series? Oh, you bet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So... This is after all the things he'd done wrong. On May 17, 1853, the legislature passed an act creating the California Rangers. With Harry Love as their captain and Governor John Bigler signed it into law, it authorized the formation of a company not to exceed 20 men for service of three months, unless they got disbanded earlier. Each enlistee was to be paid one hundred and fifty dollars a month, which in eighteen fifty three that said, was darn good was money good. back then. Yeah, yeah. But was required to furnish his own horse, weapons, equipment, and provisions. Okay. And it was clear from the outset that this ranger force was established for the sole purpose of eliminating the Joaquin gang of outlaws. What area was this um, down in California? Yeah, I believe it was. I, was it down uh, around L.A. or in that yeah, area? Yeah, it's the, like Mission uh, San Jose. Mission Viejo? Yeah, the, yeah, down that area. I see. So, but, you know, sort of like the Texas Rangers, but 
but not quite, really. But, you know, once his rangers were assembled in late May, Captain Love led the company out in this historic manhunt for one guy, for more, well, his gang, too. But for more than a month, he and his men explored the San Joaquin Valley and the Sierra Foothills. So you're right about the, the area. Yeah, I think I, I remember reading stories when I was down announcing the Clovis Rodeo that all through that San Joaquin Valley, uh, there were stories about uh, right. Marietta. Yeah, and, but they were searching for the leads uh, to the gang's current location. Well, so information from interrogation led them on across the coast ranges to Mission San Jose, mm-hmm. where Marietta was said to visit occasionally. And there, uh, Love made his first notable arrest on July 10th, when his rangers collared a guy by the name of Jesus Feliz. Uh-huh. And he was a known uh, confederate and relative by marriage to Marietta. The gang leader. And he was a bad guy, too, this uh, Jesus. But after a pretty intensive interrogation, and I don't know what they did, a Feliz. They asked him nicely. They asked him nicely. Yeah. Love took his prisoner and company 50 miles south to San Juan Batista. Uh-huh. Been okay. There. All right. So, the question, why did Jesus Feliz, a hardened criminal, assist his captors in their quest for well, his former partners I think in I understand crime? That. <laughs> that can only be a good guess. Uh, anyway, he may have tried uh, the life of an outlaw, especially after seeing two of his brothers die violently. He may have simply thought, you know, I'm tired of this getting killed and shot at, and in return for leniency. And He's tired of getting killed yeah, and shot at? You yeah, only die once. Yeah. Yeah, well, getting killed and shot several at? times. Oh, I see. <laughs> but he knew he would get some leniency I from see. the court, <laughs> you know. So in any event, Love took him along on the hunt, and the information he provided proved essential to the Rangers for their success. How big a gang was Marietta's? You know, it doesn't really say because there was, uh, it's almost like there was two or three gangs, and he was kind of the head of them, sort of a kind of a family corporation. Yeah, yeah. So, but anyway, with provisions for an eighteen-day adventure. Love's men spread the word at San Juan Batista that they were heading off on a scout down the coast. Now, this was a deliberate lie, and it was intended to hide the passing of their actual plans so that Joaquin would kind of be fooled. Oh, sinister. Yeah. So the the residents, uh, uh, you know, they kind of passed the word on where they thought Love was going to go. Now, Love led his rangers into the Salinas Valley. He stopped in the afternoon, evidently to spend the night. But when darkness fell, he had them break camp, mount up, and make a forced march along the San Benito River Ooh. to Pinoch Pass in the remote section of the coast ranges. Uh-huh. He set up camp there and set out some scouting patrols looking for signs of the band, of Marietta's band. Now... This love was a pretty interesting guy. I wish I knew more about him, but he was not one to sit in camp and wait for his men to report. I right? see. He didn't just sit there. So love uh, took this Jesus Feliz in charge. Oh, they still got the guy. Oh, yeah, they still oh. got him. And so love took him and started a little scouting party himself. Mm-hmm. Now, following his nose, so to speak, his trailing instincts, uh, like I said, this guy was a pretty good, pretty good guy, and perhaps suggestions from Feliz. I wonder what they did to coerce him, possibly to keep on helping. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How long is that yeah. rope? <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, he led the patrol southwards for some twenty miles. On July twentieth, he came on a deep canyon where Mexican Mustang hunters were camped with a herd of several hundred horses. Now, brands on some of the animals made it clear that not all were wild mustangs. Oh, they were recently purchased. Yes, and Love suspected the herd included horses stolen from the ranches on the coast. Now, without alerting the Mexicans to his presence, he headed back to his own camp to get reinforcements. Oh, absolutely. So he's a a smart guy. Yeah. So the next day, he returned with his entire ranger company, which still is only about 20 guys. Yeah. I mean, it's not a lot of guys. Um, And they rode directly into the camp. Uh, Marietta's camp. Yeah, rode right on in. Now, while the Mexicans, some of whom were probably Marietta gang members, they kind of walked silently I, they, I guess they didn't know who was coming in. So um, they watched, and he and his men kind of examined the suspect horses, and they confiscated eight that they believed had been stolen. So did this band of horse thieves know that these were rangers? 
You know, I don't know that they did, but they were mixed with Marietta's band. So you got the Mustangers oh. that are just getting Mustangs, oh. and then his gang. Okay. So anyway, after telling the Mustangers he was taking the horses to San Juan Batista for positive identification, Love departed with his Rangers. And now, the horses? Yeah, with just those eight horses. Now, believing this would send the Mustang hunters straight to Murrieta to warn him that lawmen were hot on his trail, Love made camp about 10 miles away from the canyon and waited three days. Uh, he's got some, some things going on here. He's figuring this out. So he allowed the Mustangers ample time to round up their horses and move out. Okay. Now, on July 24th, he and his rangers returned to an empty canyon. But tracks revealed that the Mustangers had moved their herd westward down the canyon and convinced that his idea had worked and the Mustang hunters would lead him straight to Murrieta, Love rested his men the remainder of that day and evening in preparation for what was likely to be an exciting day okay, on now, the next day. I want to make sure I follow this in okay. the audience. Okay. Uh, Love took his outfit with the horses 10 miles away. Right. Okay. Unwaited. Then waited three days. Yes. Then, at the end of the third day, went right back to the outlaw camp and waited there. Right. But he knew, he uh, figured these Mustangers were headed to Murrieta's, uh, uh, where he was at, his camp. So he was letting them come to him. Y y well... Yeah, but he was going to follow the, the tracks of these Mustangers. You're confusing me. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, let's just keep going. Maybe it'll straighten out. <laughs> anyway, so here we go, Zeb. At 2 o'clock in the morning, on July 25th, the Rangers moved down the canyon to the valley below. Dawn was breaking when they spotted smoke from a campfire some three miles ahead. Love and his men rode hard toward this site and got within 400 yards before they were discovered. By all this noise, the, it awakened the Mexicans, which, again, was a mixture of Mustangers and the Murrieta gang members. I see. All right? Making noise. Making noise. As the Rangers thundered into camp, all heck broke loose. Heck. Heck broke loose. Most of the Mustang hunters ran for their horses. Obviously. Sure. While the banditos, they the bad guys, they went for their guns. Oh. Okay? So now you know who's who. Who's good and bad. Right. Yeah. The mounted rangers herded those running back into the camp at gunpoint. One man, quote, a handsome, long-haired, fair-complected young Mexican of about 23, standing beside his horse at the edge of a deep canyon, stepped forward and said, quote, talk to me, I am the leader of this band. Mm, that was Murrieta? Yeah. So, a, guy, a ranger by the name of Bill Byrnes reined up at this point, took one look at the man and recognized him as the one they wanted. And he said, and the ranger said, quote, this is Joaquin, boys, he shouted, and he said, we have got him at last. And they had their guns out. Yeah. Now, hearing this, one of the bandit uh, chieftain's followers, later identified as Bernardino, get this, Zeb, three-fingered Jack Garcia. Oh, yeah. Went to school with his sister. <laughs> Three-fingered Jack Garcia yeah. pulled out a pistol and shot off two rounds, uh, directing his fire at the ranger captain, Love. Well, one bullet grazed Love's head and made a new part in his hair, Woo! while the others missed entirely. He, this guy must have been a bad shot or uh, really excited. Anyway, an immediate, immediate answer of about nine shots fired by a guy by the name of Charlie Bloodworth, Bill Henderson, two other rangers, riddled the body of Three-Fingered Jack. So Three-Fingered was no Gone. more. Gone. He was no more. Yeah. To make sure that he was dead, now this is a little bit... Uh, yeah, but we're used to it. Yeah, okay, you? all right. Okay. So to make sure he was dead, Bill Byrnes and Love each pumped around into his head. Yeah. Okay. Well. So Garcia had lived only seconds after shooting at Love, but if his intention was to divert the Rangers' attention from his leader and give Marietta a chance to escape, he was successful, uh -oh. at least for a little while. Uh oh. So Marietta's taken off. He's gone. He's heading out. So when Jones got shot, grazed in the head, Marietta jumps Love. on his horse and he's gone. Yeah. When love got hit in the head. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. It's confusing. <laughs> okay. Keep this straight, or keep me straight. <laughs> so before the rangers could grab him, Murray had jumped onto his horse and riding bareback, dropped down the embankment to a creek below and raced off along the floor of the canyon. Okay. 
Henderson, one of the rangers, uh, the closest rangers to the fleeing bandit, emptied the other barrel of his shotgun at him, but his horse sh- uh, shied, causing him to miss. So he didn't didn't get him. But uh, dropping the shotgun, Henderson spurred his horse in pursuit at full gallop. He fired his six-shooter, hitting Joaquin's horse in the leg, but the animal kept on going for, for a ways. This is like a TV series. Yeah. Now, a second pistol shot dropped the horse. I, you know, I hate to see a horse die. Yeah. You know, but Murrieta, he sprang to his feet, ran off down the canyon. Another ranger by the name of John White rode along the rim of the, uh, the uh, canyon, firing his rifle at the wanted gang leader as Henderson continued with his six-shooter. So now you've got two guys chasing him. On either side. Yeah. Okay. So this long-sought bandit chieftain finally pitched forward into the creek with three bullets in his back. He was dead. That was the end of Joaquin. When the well, not quite. There's some you more. got more. Oh, I've got more. Oh. When the Rangers reached Marietta, he muttered his last words: "Quote, don't shoot anymore. I'm dead." <laughs> Very I astute. thought that was a... Don't shoot anymore, I'm, I'm dead. I'm dead, just, you know, quit shooting. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, Captain Love did what he had to do, an act which was commonly performed in the early West to prove the death of a wanted fugitive. What'd they do? He had his men cut off the head of the bandit, Joaquin. In addition, he had them sever the head and the deformed hand of three-fingered Jack to prove that Joaquin's lieutenant had also been killed holy moly now, aware okay zeb remember this is july yeah aware that it, excuse me in the midsummer heat these grisly artifacts would uh, uh deteriorate rather quickly oh. he handed them over to a guy named bill barnes i bet he was happy and a new recruit named john sylvester with instructions to hurry to fort miller about a hundred miles distant oh and preserve the trophies in alcohol a hundred miles yeah how fast can you go 100 miles on a horse, Eb? Carrying ahead. <laughs> so, with the grizzled trophies wrapped in a gunny sack and firmly secured behind Barnes' saddle, the two rangers crossed the San Joaquin on a ferry operated by the guy by the name of Samuel Bishop, to whom they explained their mission and displayed the gruesome trophies. They were already starting to, how should we say, go bad. We'll leave it at that. Uh, yeah, that's It okay. so happened that Bishop was well supplied with spirits, and he offered You're help. You're talking about he might have had a, a little imbibing. He had produced an empty liquor keg, keg I see. into which the heads and hand were placed and covered with red-eye whiskey from a 40-gallon barrel. Oh, so they put the head in there. And then and the it hand. With, and put it, covered it with whiskey, and co- red-eye whiskey. This 40-gallon barrel. I hope you're not going where I think you're well, going. Well, uh, I don't know. No. The keg was then secured to the back of a hired mule provided by the ferryman, and Byrnes and Sylvester continued on to Fort Miller. Now, there it was found that the head of Three-Fingered Jack was so badly deformed by the bullets that had killed him and by de- decomposition that it was useless for identification purposes, so it was buried. The hand. Yeah, but there's something else I'm going to talk about that kind of disputes that. Oh, I can't I know wait. we're getting short on time. Okay. So the head of Joaquin and the hand of Garcia, uh, you know, this is not right. The, the, the head of Joaquin and the hand of Garcia were retained in glass jars of alcohol so they could be viewed. So the first public notice of Joaquin's achievement appeared in the form of a letter to the San Joaquin Republican uh, newspaper with an appendage note regarding the weather, explaining Love's concern about the preservation of the heads. And he said, I hasten to inform you of the death of Joaquin, the robber, who has been such a curse in the country for some time. Captain Barnes, one of the rangers, and Mr. Sylvester arrived here yesterday evening with the heads of Joaquin and one of his band, whom they captured at a place called Singing River, about 140 miles from here. The remainder of the party are expected to be here this evening with two prisoners. The weather is very warm. Thermometer 115 degrees in the shade. Ugh. Okay, now I'm going to show you uh, a poster. All right, Dad. show me a poster. Okay, no, we're about out of time. So here's a poster. Yeah. It says, will be exhibited for one day at the Stockton House. Oh, my. This day, August 19th from 9 a.m. until 6 p.m. Then in big letters, the head of the renowned bandit, and in big, huge letters, Joaquin, and the hand of three-fingered Jack, the notorious robber and murderer. Oh, my goodness. Now, in the fine print down below, it says, Joaquin and three-fingered Jack were captured by the state rangers under command of Captain Harry Love at the Arroyo Cantina, July 24th, 
No reasonable doubt can be entertained in regard to the identification of the head now on exhibition as being that of the notorious robber Joaquin Marietta as it has been recognized by hundreds of persons who have formerly seen him. Oh, my goodness. So if you, now, Sam, if you saw this, you'd, you'd want to go see mm, that. Uh, why would you say I'd want to go? <laughs> yeah, It's because, not really on my bucket list. But we're both curious, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'd pay. Do you a have dime. a picture of Joaquin Marietta? Did he ever have an actual um, picture? There are, but I and I oh. I don't have one. Okay. Yeah, but there are some pictures of Holy him smokes. when he was alive. They were gruesome times, yeah. Doctor History. Yeah, and so I, I found it interesting that the Zorro stories kind of yeah kinda, intertwined. Yeah, intertwined with that. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I got to hand it. Well, no, I don't know if I should or not. <laughs> no, I got to hand it to you. That was a good story this morning, Joaquin Marietta. I'd heard a lot about him, and especially when you go in that area, they still talk about him. Do they? Yeah. yeah. Anyhow, Dr. History did it again on Tuesdays, starting at 10.06 right here on Zebeth Ranch. And don't forget, on Thursdays, we have another special segment called Cache County School Days, brought to you by A Child's World at 1308 Overland in Burley. That's coming up on Thursdays at 10.10. Right now, we're going to send it. What do you got? Just real quick, Zeb, uh, for your listeners, if you don't catch the show on Tuesday, you can go to iTunes or to my webpage and listen to it anytime you want. Absolutely. You can find out more about Murray at his head. All right. Hey, I'll tell you what, we're going to take a little break, send it back over to Wheels. We'll be back in three minutes. And now back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436 2244 or toll free 1 866 927 4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. What a morning! What a morning! And we're all blessed. Hey, good morning and welcome back to our number three, if you will, Zeb at the Ranch. And again, our thanks go out to Ramsey Heating and Electric Analytics for your home comfort systems. Absolutely check it out. Call Ramsey's today at 678-0459. And along with Lennox, they're offering up to $1,700 in rebates on a new home comfort system. Check it out today. Ramsey Heating and Electric on Overland and Burley, 678-0459. You know, we had kind of an interesting morning about a half an hour ago. We had another guest planned for this time slot. And all of a sudden, this gentleman has been pushed onto the scene. And he probably wasn't ready to come on my program. I wasn't even aware he was going to come on my program, but we say good morning to a nationally recognized host of business, politics, and lifestyles, Gary Goldman. How are you? I am wonderful. Wonderful. How are you today, Dan? Well, I got to ask you, you're back in Boston, Massachusetts, right? Yes, I am. Well, you're a conservative, so you must feel like a rainbow trout in a lake full of carp. Yeah, it's a, it, look, it, there's no doubt about it. It's a battle on a regular basis, and I hate using that word battle, but some days it is. There's a, you know, there's a mindset here in Boston, New England, to some degree, that uh, those on the left, no, no matter what they propose or what they do, is all right, and they give them a uh, free pass no matter what the issue may be. But, you know, look, at all, all people like myself can do is get out there and try to give the information to make let people make an honest decision on their own. Gary, what is the big uh, topic of discussion on your program as far as the Trump administration? Is it really the investigation by the Democrats? Is it really perhaps something to do with the economy? What, what is the big hot button to get people to talk to you? There, there are two hot buttons. The first button is uh, they want the president to do something about the abuses that he faced during this whole uh, investigation. They want those that lied, and you know, especially in the Department of Justice, that may have played a role. They want justice uh, served on those individuals, and they want the president, and hopefully, the senators will will you know open it up and investigate and find out who did what. And truthfully, they want to see somebody uh, pay the price. That's- Weekly, 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 daily, I hear the same thing. It's not a vin, vin, you know vindictive type of thing. They just felt that, the, and, and I think if you look at what's going, what has gone on, um, we need to know what happened. Look at it. We're as close to a coup, a soft coup in this country as one can imagine. And to think we're just going to close our eyes and and pretend this didn't happen would be a shame on anybody, regardless of what their political affiliation is. Because who knows who is next? 
And the other big topic is immigration. I mean, we're, there's not a city or town within my voice that we have a 50,000-watt station. We cover a good portion of New England. Um, we're, we're in Sanctuary City, USA, around here, and uh, we, we have some very interesting things going on. We just had a judge indicted by a federal grand jury for allowing a drug dealer mm-hmm. to be exited out of the rear of mm-hmm. the courthouse because she did not want ICE to uh, take him into custody. So, you know, it, it's a very unique uh, situation in regard to that. But immigration and justice for President Trump, I'd say, that you are topic. You know, and this really surprises me, Gary, so please uh, bear with me and understand. I live in a very conservative area, as opposed to what I would think on the East Coast, especially in the Boston market. I would have thought it would be very difficult for a conservative talk show like yours and a conservative voice like yours to be successful. And when you told me that's uh, the hot button to make sure that Trump gets his justice and also immigration, i got to admit I'm a little surprised. Surprised. Yeah, so so look at there's there's the let's call them the regulars, the conservatives that you know the listeners that are there and they 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 want certain things out of their government and they're not necessarily you know drinking the Kool Aid that the Massachusetts uh, the rest of the people in Massachusetts drink on a regular basis. But with that said, you know that that Boston Cambridge market is probably. You know, it, I have done some shows literally in Boston, in the Boston market, and it's much more difficult. You get out to the suburbs, the western part of the state, proves to be a little more conservative. But here's the thing, Jeff, Jeff, excuse me, that you are looking at people even on both sides of the aisle, I think, that are reasonable, and they know when there's right or wrong, whether it's in regard to immigration or in regard to um, a coup taking place in in, in American uh, government system that you know rational minds will prevail and uh, th- th- they they want to see things done that better the country. Now, with that said, there are just certain things um, in th- that you bring up that I've just brought up, like immigration. You go into the Boston area and talk about immigration; they will do anything they can to help. The mayor of Boston said he'd open City Hall to let. Uh, Illegal immigrants hide and sleep if he had to. So, oh you know, it's a very broken up market. But at the same token, there are there are reasonable people, and I'm finding more and more reasonable people that call me on a regular basis. Even some liberals will call me that are starting to tell me their party is going so far to the left that they're very concerned. Now, they're not saying they're jumping on the conservative bandwagon, but they're concerned to the degree their party has. Uh, shifted to the left and how radical it has become. Gary, help me on something, and please explain this to me, because like I said, I live out here in the West, a very conservative area of the West, and we hear about the sanctuary cities, we hear about the uh, stupidity that's going on in San Francisco, Sacramento, L.A., etc., and Chicago, and the list goes on, <clears throat> excuse me, from a person that lives right there in the shadow of Boston and sanctuary cities, why? Why will the population allow this to happen basically as a gathering point for illegals and uh, some people that might do harm to the whole community? Why would they let this happen? You know, it's a mindset. And I, when, I, when I talk to people and they bring up immigration and we have a conversation I keep telling them you're missing a very important word here. The word is illegal. We're not, you know, Americans are great people. They're very giving people. But they want illegal immigration. We want to know who's in this country. But between them, the mainstream media in this area, the tone of all the elected officials, there is a consensus of the population that are okay with this. And it is hard for me to believe because we've had our share of tragedies where illegals have done things and have you know, killed an individual uh, whether it's a homicide type of killing or whether it's a car accident type of killing. But the, the, the forgiveness part that people will talk to me about, like this quote-unquote forgive and forget, I, I'm, I don't buy onto that because if you're here illegally, and if you're here illegally and you're breaking the law, why are we protecting you? Why is the mainstream media giving them a break on the news at 5, 6, 7 o'clock at night when they are pulled po- uh, posing as much harm to them and their families as they are anybody else. So I I think it's a mindset, but I also think 
things that happened this week, like with this uh, district, excuse me, this district judge that mm-hmm. was indicted, people are waking up and saying, wait a second here, we're paying the judge to uphold the law and not make up the law herself. If you want to be an activist judge, maybe you should take up another line of uh, work. Again, now the district attorneys within the Commonwealth are suing ICE as of today, not all of them, but a good portion of them, for going in into their courtrooms and, um, you know, taking these individuals out. So I put a call into one of the district attorney offices this morning, try to get one on the air to speak with me, and I said, so your position is to protect a drug dealer, to protect, protect someone that's um, committed a horrific crime. What about us, the taxpayers? Not just a drug dealer or someone that committed, uh, committed a crime, someone here illegally, no answer. They, their feeling is that illegal people have as much rights as those of us that are here illegally, and the next push is going to be for voting. We, I can see this coming. They're going to be pushing for illegals to be able to vote in local, state, and eventually federal elections. Well, therein lies the crux of the whole problem, Gary, with the destruction and the complete eradication of a constitution of the greatest country ever on the face of the earth, the United States of America. It seems like our laws and our constitution values mean nothing today, according to the Democrats and the left. No, look, at whatever narrative fits them on any day of the week, any time of the day, is what they will push for. So they want to pick and choose which laws they want to uphold. That's not why I elected my district attorney to the seat that she is in. We want them upholding the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts as well as making sure that the federal laws are being upheld. At the same token, if we allow this to go on, and I think this is such a pivotal point in America today, and, you know, God forbid Donald Trump loses the next election. I think we're in very serious trouble. But if we allow this to go on, at what point do we unravel everything that this country was built on? And it's quickly unraveling. And if we allow behavior like this for people who are elected to office to change the rules of the game, we're in big trouble. We have another district attorney who has come in and set laws uh, for shoplifting, for, for assaulting an officer, changed the whole rules of engagement. Um, if you if you shoplift and you can prove that you needed the, the yeah, goods that you shoplift, there'll be no charges brought against you. Breaking and entering, no charges are brought against you. I got news for you. Someone breaks into my house, I want justice served on those individuals. If they break into mine, Gary, and I don't mean to be blunt, but I'm being very succinct, they will not walk out the door. Yeah, uh, listen, I hear you. And, and if I was to get on the air and say what you just said in... Uh, Massachusetts on the radio show, it would be they would be calling for me to be removed from the radio. That when it comes to you know firearms and guns, most people in this state have no clue what they're what they're talking about. I'm a big gun proponent. I'm a big supporter of law enforcement, and any time I do this, the, the calls and threats that I receive email wise, and I will call them threats, is just totally outrageous. And most of it's because of ignorance. Let me ask you this. I've only got a few minutes left, and you're a very, very good guest to have on here. When you look at the Bernie Sanders, and you look at the Kamala Harris's, the Cory Booker's, the Joe Biden, now that's in the race, I mean, there's 20 of these people, and they have fringe attitudes on a lot of different perspectives they want to change America or take away from America. Which one or which three or four scare you the most? I think i'm not that scared of joe biden i, I joe biden i think is going to implode bernie sanders scares me to some degree because if, and, and maybe i'm tainted because of the you know the area i live in with the college a lot of colleges around here a lot of students that believe anything that he says and does and that's concerning to me and i think he's probably the one that scares me the most i think um the others i'm not that concerned about um but i think sanders is a big problem i don't think that Joe Biden is going to get that far which is because of the blunders that he will continue to make and I think he has some baggage behind him and should the Obama administration to any degree be investigated as part of this quote unquote Russian collusion thing I think the, it takes away uh, Biden's credibility as well for a guy that said his administration never had any scandals um, but I think um, Bernie Sanders is is a, you know uh, would concern me a little bit I personally think Bernie's going to be the nominee against 
President Trump uh, in 2020. What is there, in your opinion, as a conservative talk show host like me, what is there about socialism and about government control and absolutely having their thumb on the American public that is at all appealing to the young people and anybody else back in your area? Why? Why would they want to get rid of capitalism and the values of this great country? A lot of them will believe anything they're, they are told. So, you know, as much as Venezuela is a horrific thing that's going on now, it's, it could have happened at a better time to show a little contrast. The problem is because the schools have stopped, stopped teaching American values, civics, history. They don't understand how wealthy a country Venezuela was at time at one time, and the same thing can happen to, to us. So these, there are a lot of, you know, I see, I see kids, you know, the millennials, in this particular area, they've been handed things all their lives. They're snowflakes. They want free stuff. They want to get to the top quickly. They think Bernie is going to give them some miracle formula, meaning universal income, free this, free that. What they don't understand is after a while, though, that small percentage that they, that they deplete all of their income from to give away, they are now going to come back at the middle class to suffice their needs. So I think it's just what they're being told. Look at the, the, those on the left are, they should be in this, you know, uh, book writing business of fictional books because that's what they're doing on a regular basis. Bernie Sanders talked socialism all day, but he became a wealthy guy off capitalism and democracy. And he, you know, he's a big hypocrite in that regard, but it doesn't matter. They want to hear free things. This is anti big business, anti government, anti if you're wealthy, you're bad mentality that's going out there um it's been out there for a long time i think the obama administration really gave it a boost but um these young kids have bought onto this and they want the easy way out and they think a guy like sanders is going to give them the easy way out i think he's just going to dig them uh deeper hole and they're going to be in for a surprise of their lives. Real quick, Gary, i got to have you comment. One of my pet subjects on this program is the idiocy of promoting Medicare for all. One size fits all. I personally think it's going to be the ruination of health care in our country and the ruination of health research in our country. Your thoughts from being back on the East Coast. Am I right or wrong? You are 100% right. It's very dangerous. It will it will destroy one of the greatest medical systems in the world. Um, there's no way that it, there's no way there is enough money to put that program into play to any degree that we would need to keep the system at a status quo where it is now. But it would be the, the most horrific thing that would happen in this country. Um, again, that's just another narrative that they're laying out there. People have to do their research and look at countries that have played with their medical systems, Canada for to be exa- one example, and they, they will be begging to have a system like we have now. But I agree with you, it will hurt this country on so many different levels. And the scary thing to me is as we get older, your chances of getting any type of medical assistance, whether it's a heart transplant or a heart surgery, you'll be put on a list. If we have some money and time, maybe we can, maybe we can give you the services. Think about that. Whoever thought we'd be talking like this about the United States of America? Absolutely. Gary, final thought here, and I'm going to go over to the other side of the tracks, if you will. What do you think, in your opinion, that Donald Trump needs to do to be reelected in 2020, and what are his weaknesses that he has to improve on? Okay. I think the president, the one thing I think he has to be very careful with, I'm all for his tweeting. But I think the midterms told us he better be careful what he tweets and how he tweets. I, I realize that's the only way that he can get his point across, number one. So I think that's, that's something that I know talking to callers, um, people that voted for him are just tired of it. And they don't mind him talking policy, but when he, when he, you know how he gets and he'll go after somebody. So that's an issue. I think the economy, we're going to be safe and we're going to be strong with the economy. I really think, number one, the border issue, he has to deal with this border issue. And he has to deal with the sanctuary cities. And I personally think if he gets tough with these sanctuary cities and people like this judge here in Massachusetts that I know they made an example of and shows the American people that he means business and why he's doing this to make the country safe as a whole, that will be a big plus for him because it's been one of his biggest promises since he's been running for office. And I think he's, he has to make sure that 
so the economy is doing well, that all sectors of the economy are real, uh, are reach, are, are, you know, are approaching a level where they're getting the income that they need to move on and, and, and still have part of that American dream. Um, a strong economy is one thing. If it's controlled by just a small uh, populace, that's a problem. And there is, if you look at some of the reports out there and some of the things I read, there's this psychological impact. And I'm always a big believer in the psychological effect of things. But when the American people think psychologically the economy is doing well, I may not be doing that well. You just have to be careful in that regard. But I think that, I think that one of the big things is immigration, and I'd love them to resolve this uh, issue with North Korea and come to some sort of peace. And finally, ISIS has real, you know, has, has raised its head once one more time. He cannot let up on that war. He has to show them who is in charge. And I don't know if we will ever destroy them, but we have to really put them in a place where we we can rest a little assured at night that they're not going to be. Um, sneaking up on us at some unexpected time. Well, Gary, I'm going to say this, and I mean this. I say very little on this program that I am not sincere about. You are always welcome back on this program. I'm glad that we had a little mix-up on guests this morning because it gave us a chance to get to know you, and I'm going to ask you if you'll come back in the future. Anytime you need me, just uh, give me a holler, and it's been my pleasure speaking with you this morning. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, nationally recognized host of Business, Politics, and Lifestyles, Gary Goldman from back in Boston, Massachusetts, a new friend of this program. God bless you, Gary. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. All right, sir. I enjoyed that conversation with that gentleman, and I'm going to keep his uh, number and file and uh, have him back in the future. He's back in the middle of the lion's den of liberalism and all the crackpots like Bernie and Camilla and the rest of them. Gary Goldman, very interesting individual. Holy smokes, I did it again. (laughs) Whole wheels. He's over at the station saying, "Uh, sir, if you don't mind looking at the clock it's time for the weather yes it is scarrows meets 331 north road jerome 3247657 oh my goodness all the delicious meats all the different uh, packages of meats whether it's beef pork and chicken or all the buckboard bacons the different flavors and the breakfast sausages and the bratwurst i love bratwurst and don scarrow and his crew do the best serving you scarrows meets in jerome right now here's gina with the weather Definitely spring-like conditions for today, and we are expecting mostly cloudy skies, a little bit of a breeze, high of 49 tonight. We do have a slight chance of rain, possible snow showers up in the higher elevations with a low of 30. For tomorrow, again, partly cloudy skies, expecting a high of 56 with an overnight low of 34. Warming up for Thursday, partly sunny skies, high of 63. Then as we make our way towards the weekend, going to be warming up into the mid-70s by Sunday, possible 77 under mostly sunny skies. That's a look at your weather forecast for Zebeth Ranch. You know, it's chilly out there right now. What is the current temperature? i got to take a look here real quick. Wheels, do you have the current temp over there by any chance? I don't, but let me check real quick. Okay. I'm going to tell everybody the weather brought to you by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. My goodness, go to their website, scarrowsmeats.com. Don, Scarrow, and the crew, delicious meats. How delicious? Well, they are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time at Scarrow's Meats. What would you find out, buddy? To be honest, I, I <laughs> my phone says about, ooh, my phone says about, like, 40 degrees or so? You know, I heard that it's about that temperature and that cold outside, and uh, I was just doing some real checking quickly, and let me see what I've got. I've got uh, 41 right here at my place. 41. That's chilly for almost the 1st of May, my friend. You know, it is, like, with how the past, you know, week's been or so. Oh, my. I, it, it's been it's been rough. It, it's kind of took a, an effect on my little bones. Oh yeah, I'll tell you what, wheel that chair faster. Anyway, don't forget our major sponsor. We want to talk about real quick, and that's of course your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, folks. I'm telling you, they're in the middle of a big spring tire sale, and you can save money and get the best tires for your car, pickup, SUV, horse trailer, boat trailer, whatever you need tires for. All 
all the tread designs, all the sizes, everything, everything right there at the Big Spring Tire Sale at the 7 Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Center. Stop in and see them today, and don't forget the best in brake service, front end alignment, shocks and struts and batteries. Oh, my! But above all, the best in service. They really care. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike in Jerome, Twist Family in Paul, nice folks, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley, the best, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Wow. I really appreciated uh, the guests this morning and all the calls. Thank you very much. Great program again tomorrow for May Day, May Day, May 1st. And uh hope you'll chime in. Every day at the end of the program we say the way things were or the way things ought to be. And the world needs more cowboys. Tomorrow morning, 806 Zeb at the Ranch, along with my old buddy over at the station, Wheels, we'll be here. God bless you. Have a safe day.